Good evening and welcome to the November 7, 2016 meeting of the Town of Scarborough Planning Board. Would you please rise and <coughs> pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Karen, can you please call the roll? Ms. Saunders? Here. Mr. Bealey? Here. Ms. Auglis? Mr. Fellows? Here. Mr. Mazur? Here. Mr. McGee? Here. Thank you. Mr. Bealey will be a voting member. I mean, uh, Saunders. You're right. Yes. Ms. Saunders will be a voting member this evening. Ms. Auglis' absence. Thank you. This board is a moving target. <laughs> uh, next item is approval of minutes from the October 11, 2016 meeting. <coughs> I'll motion to approve. Move? Motion to approve. We have a second? I'll second that. <laughs> Any discussion? All in favor? Are you abstaining? Yeah. Unanimous with one abstention. <coughs> All right. The next item, the Planning Board will conduct a public hearing to receive comment on an amendment to the Town of Scarborough official zoning map to rezone the parcel located at 79 Muzzy Road, identified as map R55, lot 18, as shown on the Town Assessor's map from the General Business District, B3, and Village Residential, VR2, to Town and Village Center, TVC3. Jay? Sure. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I think the title pretty well explains it. Um, these are two parcels <laughs> that, at least on our tax maps, abut each other. One property is completely TVC3, and the other parcel is uh, um, uh, there's a proposal by the owner to rezone the property from B3, from a combination of B3 and BR2 to all TVC3, um, and they have a development scenario that was proposed as part of the uh, application as well. Um, and I believe they're here to speak it, speak to it as well, if you're so inclined. With that, I'll turn it back to you. Okay, thank you. Judge, come on up, Rocky. Uh, good evening, Rocky Risbera, uh, Risbera Properties, LLC. Uh, just put up. <coughs> Uh, the site is uh, 79 Muzzy Road. It's currently owned by the, Car the Carrier family. Uh, it's about 11 acres in size. It is actually two parcels of land, but it's been in the Carrier family's uh, possession for quite some time. Um, we identified the, par the parcel came for sale, and we identified uh, uh, that it was certainly something we were very interested in. And in uh, doing our research, we recognized that there were three zones that actually came together on the property. Uh, there was about uh, they're all about uh, three acres a piece in size. We have uh, 3.8 acres of B3, <coughs> 3.72 acres of TVC3, and 3.56 acres of VR2. Uh, so what we'd like to do is is have the town council uh, change this zone so that it's all one zone. It's all TVC3, uh, which would allow us to uh, then move forward through the planning process with the planning board to. Uh, develop an apartment project, uh, which is what we have in mind for the, the parcel. We think it's the highest and best use. Uh, so we're really here tonight just to hopefully get a favorable opinion for the town council. It has been before the council once. Um, I would add that we actually had a, uh, we had a neighborhood meeting. We did uh, a mail out to everybody within uh, 500 feet. We did about 35 uh, uh, invitations to a public me meeting and uh, had about 22 people show up, which was really a good turnout. Uh, in my experience, um, and had uh, some good conversation, good feedback from neighbors. Didn't have any negative feedback about our concept for uh, the TVC3 zone and our, our uh, proposed apartment project. So um, we're hoping that the uh, planning board could support this zone change and happy to answer questions if you have any. All right. Thank you. Uh, before we move to any board discussion, uh, this is a public hearing. 
Uh, before I open it up, just like to remind folks if you'd like to come on up, just uh, give your name and address and limit your comments to five minutes or less. With that, I will open the public hearing. Do we have any takers? All right, seeing none, I will close the public hearing. Moving right along. Is there any board discussion? Any questions or comments on this? Nick? No. Mm -hmm. Ron? No? Robin? I'm um, just wondering who the, um, the, the, um, the abutters. Can you talk generally about the abutters? Are they commercial, residential? Mm -hmm. uh, I actually have another. Somewhat helpful. This is just off the town website. So this is the zoning map off the town's website. And basically what we're showing is we have some uh, direct butter uh, that is in the B3 zone. Uh, we have some land uh, behind us that is in the uh, VR2 zone. And we have land that directly abuts us. This is the <coughs> so, and across the street we have some B3, um, and then further behind us we have some industrial. Um, so we, we felt that it was a good transition zone. Uh, there was some discussion when we met with um, the Long Range Planning Committee about, you know, how did, we, how did we wind up with three zones on one piece of property, which is something they generally try to avoid when the, when the rezoning was done. But uh, the discussion was at the time, uh, you know, they were trying to match zones as, as closely as, as they could, uh, but felt that the TBC3 zone uh, really did make sense to, to unify this, uh, this area. So I'm not sure if I answered your question, but um, B3 yeah. directly beside us. Any residential the in the area? There is residential. This is uh, Holden Road. It exists. That's uh, residential? This is residential. Well, the front is actually TBC3, and then this back piece is BR2. So it does. It does abut uh, a short uh, dead end street. Um, one of the reasons that, that uh, I don't think we have a lot of neighborhood opposition at this point, assuming that this can go through, is that uh, changing this to TBC3 would allow us to do an apartment project and we can preserve quite a, quite a piece of buffer area off the end of Honan Road. The neighbors didn't really like the idea of extending Honan Road. Did you include and the Honan Road residents in your outreach? Yes. Yeah, and that we had good turnout from, from that. Tell yeah. Thank you. Roger? <coughs> no, I, I have no questions. I think it makes makes sense to me. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, I don't really have much to add. Um, I guess I see this on the Long Range Planning Committee a while back, and um, as Mr. Rivera alludes to, I mean, sometimes there are these sort of odd little pieces where where things don't quite seem to make sense today and uh, so in one respect it's a little bit of cleanup um, which is sometimes easier to do when you have a specific sort of project in mind um, and it seems to make sense given the location and everything else and happy to hear about the neighborhood outreach and the response to that and appreciate the update um, but beyond that unless there are any other comments I think I'm hearing uh, unanimously favorable opinion that we will be passing along to the council Thank All you right. very much. Thank you. Good luck. <coughs> Next item, number five, four Southgate LLC requests a site plan review for <coughs> Southgate Road, Assessor's Map, U37, Lot 4. Jay? Sure. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, let's see. This is a, a piece of property that... Um, Board members will probably recall this before you not too long ago for a zoning change. It was actually uh, previously zoned in the B3, and the applicant uh, proposed to change it to the industrial district for the purpose that we're, we're looking at tonight, which is the construction of a sort of a warehousing slash contractor's office space, uh, utility space type building. Um, Again, it's within the industrial district. I will note that the applicant had uh, submitted an application to staff through our pre-application review process. So they received one round of staff comments and were able to make some plan adjustments accordingly as part of that process. 
And given the proximity of the property to the Scarborough Marsh, we did ask for a wetland delineation to um, peer review to be done, and that was completed and, and found to be satisfactory. Um, at this point, um, you know, you have a, a round of uh, staff comments as well as comments from Woodard and Curran. Um, I think some of the uh, sort of most pressing issues, if you will, um, would be uh, sort of a remaining discussion regarding landscaping. As staff was sort of taking a second look at this, there was, um, and, and really sort of looking at the existing conditions on site, uh, the board might want to consider additional landscaping sort of along the northerly property line uh, between the parking field and those properties that abut Route 1 to sort of shield the uh, parking field and or overhead garage doors from potentially being viewed. Um, town engineer and, and uh, Winter and Kern also identified some, um, some tweaks to the stormwater modeling that they'd like to see accomplished um, as part of the project moving forward, uh, particularly around sort of modeling to be sure that um, things are being uh, modeled correctly, uh, culvert sizing, and just also ensure that the amount of disturbance is being adequately shown. I'm sure Angela can speak in more detail on those if there's questions there. Um, and I guess the last item I just note in staff comments is the applicant is requesting a waiver from a re uh, photometrics plan being submitted. We do have cut sheets of the proposed lights, which are full cut-off full cut lights, which meet our typical expectations. I guess the one thing we'd want to uh, probably be sure of is that they do cast at least enough light to ensure that there will be, uh, 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 be able to have safe movement from the parking field to the building. Um, um, and so I don't know if the, the applicant's been able to get a, a handle on the cut sheet. Sometimes they have a sort of a, a casting model, so to speak, shows you how far. <coughs> but um, I think other than that, um, like I said, there's a few other comments in there, but those are sort of the highlights. So with that, I turn it back to you. Thanks, Jay. <coughs> and I will turn over to Mr. Frank. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. My name is Sean Frank. I'm a civil engineer with Sebago Technics. Uh, with me tonight is uh, Ray Labonte of uh, 4 Southgate Road, LLC. Uh, the applicant associated with the project is, uh, as Jay stated, I think the board saw this in association with uh, the zone change request we worked uh, through the, with the city council, uh, town council, excuse me. Uh, and I think we're pretty much in terms of uh, online, in terms of what the, uh, the overall proposal had been at that point in time. If I could just walk over real quick. Uh, just to get everyone oriented, this is uh, Southgate Road in this location here. Route 1 would be right up and through here. I'm sorry, can everybody see all right? Um, and what we propose is a driveway to come in. Uh, there are some wetlands obviously on site. Our total wetland impact was actually 12,000 square feet associated with the proposed driveway uh, in this part of the parking area down through here uh, to a proposed parking area to service basically a 10,000 square foot building just under 10,000 square feet. Uh, the intent of this is to <coughs> commercial condominiums, five units, if you will, for uh, electrical contractors, plumbers, that, that sort of folks is, is, is who we're kind of anticipating. <coughs> if you go down to the corner, right where it takes that hard corner, it's, it's three south gate down through there, right? It's three south gate, right? And it's the exact same type of proposal we're talking about down through there, where they have individual units. They're actually uh, commercial condominiums at the end of the day. Um, and I'm sorry, this did get updated on me before. I didn't. I, I hate to bring out an updated plan. Uh, one of the comments had been for a sidewalk connecting the uh, back doors along and, and back into the parking, and certainly we will have that. Uh, there had been a discussion as well about uh, losing this pavement area down through here. We'll be happy to lose that. Uh, this will be the snow storage on either side of the dumpster area. Uh, we have water and sewers right here. There's actually a manhole right here. We will extend water into service the site. Uh, domestic will be off from a, a, a meter pit, and we will have sprinkler system as well within here. Uh, we do have, I think we have a dozen lights here right now. They are full cutoff features. I think part of the comments have been losing some along the back, especially it seems that you know, these are really just for emergency access. We'd be happy to do that. Uh, they also talked about uh, losing this one through here. Uh, we will have one over each one of the man doors uh, coming in through here. Uh, we do think that is sufficient. Again, I think if you look at the users here, we're not anticipating customers, if you will. We really anticipate this being pretty much folks that work here. Uh, very limited type of uh, uh, public access to it and those types of things. Uh, there is good buffering uh, along the back of this building here. Uh, it is a little limited right now. It has been recently cut down through it and it is with just really long grass. 
Uh, we aren't proposing any additional uh, landscaping in through here. We kind of concentrated, if you will, the entrance coming in from Route 1, excuse me, from Southgate and along the access drive <coughs> here as well. Uh, you know, certainly uh, will we have some uh, site visibility in through here, but really it's, you know, the back of their buildings, if you will, facing us. Uh, so I don't see a whole lot. You really won't see us very much from Route 1. There are the existing businesses, if you will, along Route 1. Uh, is that actually that strip mall, the real estate place, and the insurance company? Again, this is some good vegetation in through here, so I think we're really talking in through here. You know, the other part is we did have a sewer easement along that northerly property line, uh, which actually services the, uh, the existing building on Route 1 here and actually allows it to go all the way over to Southgate. I believe the other folks are tied into that as well. Um, again, from a, a staff standpoint, that was really the only uh, uh, thought we had was in terms of, you know, I think we can certainly lose some lighting and work with staff if, if, if the planning board is comfortable with that. Uh, we would just, like I say, just as soon as uh, not be adding additional landscaping. Uh, from the building perspective itself, uh, it's going to be basically an off-white, you know, earth tones, if you will, for the building, uh, a very uh, light tan. We will have uh, some darker features in terms of just the breaking up the, uh, uh, the elevation in terms of the top and the bottom. Uh, with some stonework on the bottom and uh, a ribbon along the top in terms of different flooring. <coughs> the roof all drains to the rear, and what we have here is a, uh, a stone drip edge, a, a roof drip edge to provide the treatment to the runoff of <coughs> back to the wetlands. Uh, we also have a stone tree uh, within this location here, basically allowing the runoff from the parking lot to be treated within that unit uh, prior to outletting into the wetlands. Uh, we are in receipt of uh, the staff review comments associated with stormwater, um, we certainly feel comfortable in terms of addressing those with staff and, uh, uh, you know, getting revised plans back to them. We would, uh, uh, obviously it is in November, if the board's comfortable, we certainly would appreciate a, a conditional approval and allowing us to work through staff with these uh, remain, remaining issues if, uh, if the board's comfortable with that. Uh, with that, Mr. Chairman, I would conclude my presentation and certainly hopefully between me and Mr. Labonte, we do our best to answer the board's questions. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, we do have the opportunity for a public comment on this item. If there's anyone who'd like to come on up. All right. We'll move on then. Um, Robin, do you have anything? I do. Um, first, I'd like to commend the applicant on working with staff on the pre-application process. I think it really helps to get the process moving more forward, more, pro more proactively. It's good to see your permit in hand. That's, that's something that's really um, really great, um, and uh, the fact that you've already been through one round of staff comments and it's limited really to, to one page now, I think it's really it, it, it's exemplary. Um, I would also like to commend staff for doing asking for the wetland delineation and and knowing that um, the developer was was pretty much in alignment with the wetland peer review. I think speaks volumes that it lets. Um, you know, both the developers know that in Scarborough um, we're serious about um, wetland delineation and protection and that you're, you've been very diligent with your work. So um, I would ask staff if they're comfortable with the trajectory of the project um, moving forward. And uh, so, yeah, Angela or Jay, do you feel pretty comfortable that you're on the path? Because what I'm hearing is conditional approval is being requested based on input, working with staff. Yeah, I think the only item sort of left from my perspective that I'd like to hear the board chime in on a little bit more would be the uh, consideration of the landscaping, if the board's comfortable without I, any additional landscaping, or if there's a modest amount that might be sought sort of maybe on the back side of the swale. Um, but so the suggestion for the staggered row of shrubs and evergreen trees is is really what the staff is, is going that, that's for. That's probably, there. you know, from, from sort of the planning perspective, I'll let Angela speak to if there's any uh, major issues for stormwater erosion sedimentation controls that need to still be addressed. Um, I think as far as stormwater, we've worked, like you said, back and forth with the mm -hmm. applicant. And I think between, um, well, I tried to summarize winter and Kearns, I guess, a little bit. Uh, was we worked with them, and I think we're pretty close. I think there's some minor tweaking with the model we talked about, but it's, it's definitely doable and it won't change the site. Right, and actually that, and again, I, I obviously we received these last week. I, I really hate to come in and say, here, yeah, see, we've answered these questions, uh, but obviously, again, we've been working with them and certainly appreciate their input. Um, um, 
And, uh, you know, I do actually think that we probably have the majority of uh, the items pretty, pretty well addressed at this point in time, or at least addressed in our standpoint so we can get them back to staff so they can take a look at them. I'm fine with that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Roger? Oh, thanks. Um, I, uh, I actually went down and took a look at the site. Uh, first of all, I have no problem with what you, what you have planned there for, for the building and everything like that. Um, I'm just kind of curious. There's a lot of Phragmites on that property. Um, are you gonna? Are those gonna stay there, or? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what <laughs> you know. Uh, I know, and it's an invasive species, you know. And I'm actually uh, I'm I'm working on another project uh, with Boiler Associates, as a matter of fact, trying to rid some of these Phragmites from here. Uh, that was never a, a, a point of conversation. To be perfectly honest with you, we always. Of course, from our standpoint, we always <coughs> minimize what we're going to do in the wetlands, and kind of it's a handoff type of thing. So, um, so I, I guess at this point in time, I guess they they are planning on staying there. I, I know there was a big effort a number of years ago to clear up the marsh. There were indeed. I remember there was a lot of work yeah. down yeah. along Route One. I know, and trying to get more salt water onto the other side of Route One, as I remember right, uh, uh, trying to uh, to work in terms of getting rid of those. Fa and I do, like I say, I do know on some other projects that you know. Okay. Um, I have nothing. Uh, thanks, Roger. Ross? Uh, yeah, just a couple of minor things. Um, I've been reading the notes of the staff, and you know, we have a draft motion in front of us, and it seems that most of the issues have been resolved. That's what I'm hearing anyway. But I don't see anything about snow removal. Is, uh, has that been resolved? <coughs> it has. When we added this park, this and again, it was actually in the, so that someone could turn around and, and pull back out of here. And, and, and you know, Jay has a good point. There's plenty of room here for vehicles to park. So once we lose this, there's no curb on this side. We'll actually be able to push the snow, if you will, right to the end of the parking lot uh, on either side of the dumpster. And we should be sufficient. I think we were showing it more up and through here. And I think Jay's question was, you know, how are we actually going to get it up through there, which was a very valid point. So I, I do think we have adequate locations for the snow storage at the end of the parking lot. Thank you. And the other issue is, th is to make sure that there is, since you're asking uh, for some sort of deviancy or waiver about the lighting, that there is sufficient lighting on the property. And I certainly I appreciate that. And again, our thought is the one over every door uh, in the front, uh, we, I think we stick with that. Uh, work with staff in terms of maybe going halves on the back so uh, uh, there's not so much lighting in the back where it's darker and losing the one on the side. Uh, but with the ones in the front, we're pretty comfortable that, you know, again, especially in terms of the uses we're talking about there, that we'll have adequate lighting for what we're talking about. Okay, and the last issue, which is what <coughs> Jay was talking about, what is the reluctance uh, to have any additional landscaping? It, as always, it's just budget, you know. I just think in terms of looking at, you know, the total budget in terms of where we were versus where we thought we were going to be, uh, you know, uh, uh, Ray's just trying to minimize, obviously. Come on up. Thank you very much. My name is Ray Labonte of Fort Southgate LLC. I'd like to talk to you about the landscaping. Take the microphone. Let me turn this There you go, buddy. Thank you. As Sean alluded to earlier, Route One is out here, and you have Max Deli over in here, and you've got the insurance center and the little doctor's office here. And Southgate is coming down here. When you look between the buildings, there's the parking lot for Max that's over in here and abuts the property line. And then you've got this open area of high grasses and small trees along this area. So right now, when you're looking down, you're looking at this commercial building, and it's all stacks, vents, and different things. At least when you'll be looking down now, you'll see the front of the building lit. I think it's going to be much more appealing. We have done quite a bit of landscaping up in this area. And <coughs> the uh, total excavation cost has been quite high. So I was looking and considering something along these lines. How extensive, I'm not sure I'd, what we'd be looking at, what Jay was proposing or thinking of. but. Um, like I say, right now you're looking down and you're looking straight down into this commercial building here and it's not a very nice site. And we plan on cleaning all this up and maintaining it and having it look kind of nice. So. Okay, thank you. Thank you. That's it for me. Thanks, Ron. Yeah, um, I'm okay with uh, the request for the waiver on the 
the uh, photometric plan. I assume you guys can work that out with staff. Uh, <clears throat> the last part of it is I'll just throw my hat in on the landscaping, which is uh, my personal feeling is if you're in an industrial zone, I'm not sure you, it's the necessity for a, uh, a very nice uh, landscaping plan is is really there. That's that's just my personal opinion of it. So um, that's pretty much all I have on this. Corey. Thanks. You're all set, Nick? I'm all set. Good. Right. Yes, Robin. Um, <coughs> regarding the landscaping, I guess, um, is it an option maybe, Jay, or uh, the applicant to, instead of adding more landscaping, could we maximize, or, or I'm sorry, minimize the amount of disturbance to the natural area? Is, it, is, is that possible? To reduce the impact that's currently proposed, mm -hmm. or? Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm thinking specifically of, you know, that, that stormwater management clause that I like to use a lot that says, can we m minimize the, or maintain as much natural um, buffer and, and landscaping as possible? Is, is that counterproductive, I guess, to, to what you're trying to get from the applicant, Jay? Nope, not necessarily. I guess just so long as, I, you know, the, the standard typically is where where there are industrial type uses or overhead doors, the idea is to try to shield those from the public ways. That's right. typically what the standards call for. And as we just sort of heard, that this could be somewhat visible from Route 1. Okay. Um, so if what's existing is sufficient, that's fine. If the board's comfortable with that, then um, okay. certainly that would be. Okay. Oh, Can I yeah, Andrew, please. Yeah. I mean, um, looking at minimizing, I think because of the amount of wetlands that mm -hmm. they're disturbing, I think they're minimizing as much as they can for the site. I, I don't think. They're probably going to be probably reluctant to reduce parking or mm -hmm. take away some building things like that. So I would say for what they need for the building, I'm assuming, and I'm seeing nodding, that they've really probably already minimized because they've gone through permitting for the wetland impacts they're talking about. So I, I don't know how much more yeah, they would. I just want to make sure that I'm not I'm not undermining what staff has already suggested as far as the shrub, shrubs and trees. But if that minimizing the impacts could also be taken into a, account. And, and just for what it's worth, I think when my comment was about the landscaping, sort of thinking about a few maybe evergreen uh, mm -hmm. trees planted sort of on the back side of the swale, sort of closer to the parking lot, mm -hmm. so not sort of into the wetlands, but really that back side of that swale where there's already disturbance. Mm -hmm. Not, I, I don't think, you know, wasn't sort of my thought to do a, a, you know, a full, of course, you know, full screening, but at least just maybe breaking it up with a few um, <coughs> well-placed trees is all. But and, and one again. other question, Corey, if I may, is regarding mm -hmm. the lighting waiver. Is the waiver that you're asking for to reduce the amount of lighting? It was more the photometrics plan associated with it, and, and I'll be honest with you. I mean, typically, if, if I don't have pole-mounted lights, then I typically do ask for the, the photometrics. It's usually when you have the pole-mounted lights, especially based upon the height <coughs> and how you're located within the parking, that seems to have the bigger impact appeal, especially from an off-site perspective. Okay. Um, and again, especially with these, with the LEDs, with the wall packs, with the full cutoffs, and just directed down, we were, I was just asking so you're for So you're not asking for a waiver from installing the full cutoffs it's just on doing a photometric analysis. An actual photometric analysis, correct. How does staff feel about that? Well, I guess the, the question is, you know, is the board comfortable if the applicants demonstrate that there'll be enough and adequate lighting to provide safe access from the parking field over to the, the building? Sometimes the cut fixtures or the manufacturer specs will have sort of diagrams that show sort of light distribution, and it yes. may not be shown on a plan, but you know what they can get is a, a cut sheet of the, of the fixture, which we have, yep. but then also a cut sheet that shows that distribution, that shows, you know, yeah, it goes out 40 feet or it goes out 10 feet, and I think that's just sort of what we know. Generally, it's conceptually, to me, it makes sense that, yeah, there's probably going to be enough lighting, mm -hmm. but without the evidence, that's for the board to determine if you're you're comfortable with what you're hearing or how you want to move forward with it. And if you're interested in my perspective, um, the this is an area for migratory birds, so you know, I'm not sure if that warrants a need more of a need to do the photometrics or less of a need to do the photometrics. Um, because of you know, the the migratory bird, you know, you generally try to keep the lighting 
lower so that it doesn't um, impact their their sort of migratory. And, and again, I, and, I, and I'm not, I'll be the first, I, I certainly wasn't looking at it from that okay. particular perspective, but that certainly was at least ours in terms of why we were just talking wall packs and not talking pole okay. mounted lighting. It was just in terms of adding light to the site. Go ahead. Come up, right? Come on, say more. Thank you. Uh, I just wanted to uh, talk to uh, Robin about that. Uh, the lighting that we're proposing is called dark sky lighting, yep. so it doesn't cast a hue up high and everything keeps it down low. And based on the building that I'm in now at 3 Southgate, we have those type of lights. And the way that the light casts, it forces it out. It's LED. So. will come off the building and cast out in this area in here. Mm -hmm. It's going to come out about like this. Uh, but Jay's got to, I mean, it's certainly the catalogs, I can certainly get that information and at least provide that to staff. And, and again, if, if obviously if, if they're still uncomfortable, it'd be, you know, we'd be more than happy to come back to the board if we need to, you know, for that one item if, if staff doesn't ever come. I wanted to talk briefly also about the shrubbery issue with the grasses. I had this bush hogged so that um, they could get in there and do some engineering. Uh, we appreciate and it. And this was all tall grasses out in here, and these get up over four feet, four to five feet high. It's all wild grass all through here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Did you have something else, Robin? Yeah. Um, just a question on the lighting. Um, if if we agree with what they want to do, and I tend to agree with what they, what they want to do, but say they just determine that the lighting is not sufficient and they want to add more lighting, then they would have to come back to planning, right? Okay. Correct. Right. Yeah, the way right now, uh, um, as you've seen, I, I, we did draft a, a motion for the board to consider, and essentially what it says is address all staff comments, and one of staff comments is to ensure that there's adequate lighting to hmm. the parking field. So I think, again, it, it, intrinsically it seems to make sense that based on the light pictures they're proposing, what staff seeing with other applications that there probably will be enough light cast once we see that cut sheet, but if there isn't, then we would have a discussion. If we can't come to a resolution to address that condition, then it would ultimately come back to this board to, to resolve. But um, at this point, staff's pretty comfortable that this is not an issue that would hold up the project in a meaningful and, and way. We appreciate it. Again, if the board's comfortable with that condition of approval, certainly we are. I mean, we're certainly comfortable <coughs> to work with staff through that. And again, obviously, the worst case scenario is we come back to you folks uh, on that one item. All right. Thank you. Roger? Uh, just one last thing. Uh, and I, I'm not in love with Phragmites. So I <laughs> <laughs> but when I was out there looking at the site, <coughs> might get tall. Yes, and you I do. think that, that's what you're referring to when you're talking about the tall grass, I believe, right? <coughs> I'm just wondering, Jay, if you put some fir trees out there, they may, you may not even see the fir trees because the Phragmites are pretty tall. And I think they stay around all year long, if I'm not mistaken. So that's, you know. Hmm? Robin, are you? I wanted to make sure you're yes, all set. set. Okay, you. good. Um, okay. Um, well, we've already touched, uh, pretty much touched on the the uh, hot button items here. I think we're in pretty good shape overall. Um, I am okay with the waiver for the full photometric plan. I think given um, given the fact that you know staff's willing to sort of work work with the applicant to to look at the uh, look at the information and assess things, um, I'm I'm comfortable with that. And you know, if it had to come back to us, it would come back to us. Um, but I think given that we're talking about full cutoff fixtures and is the nature of the site. I, I'm anticipating that should not be an issue. Um, on the landscaping and buffering, um, I certainly do appreciate staffs um, raising that as a, as a concern and, and something to think about. For me, I think um, given the fact that you know, we're not talking about you know, real direct frontage on Route 1 uh, and that there is some naturally occurring pretty tall, rapidly growing vegetation out there, and the fact that the building itself, to the extent that it can be seen, I think is, as the uh, owner um, pointed out, uh, is, a, is an improvement over what you can see from Route 1 now. And I think as industrial um, buildings go, it's a fairly attractive uh, little building. Um, and so it'll certainly be an improvement. I think that's always a, you know, 
question to ask ourselves on things like this where we're sort of on the fence, you know, is it at least incrementally better than what's there now? So, um, and then uh, we alluded to uh, stormwater and the fact that staff will continue to work with the applicant on, on those sort of technical details. Um, but again, it seems like things are, are well on track and um, I think, you know, to the extent that, um, to the extent that, um, you know, in the unlikely event that there are any issues that sort of come back that cannot be resolved with staff, obviously we can deal with that as it comes. Um, so with that, I would like to put a draft motion, or actually it would be just a motion forward. Um, I move to approve the application of 4 Southgate LLC, represented by Sebago Technics under Chapter 405 Zoning Ordinance and Chapter 405B Site Plan Review Ordinance with the following findings, waiver, and conditions. Findings as stated, uh, one waiver, waive the requirement for a full photometric plan provided the applicant deliver evidence to staff that adequate lighting will be provided to ensure safe access between the parking spaces and the building. Uh, two conditions, number one, prior to the issuance of a building permit, the applicant shall A, provide revised plans to address comments and planning department staff excluding landscaping and Woodward and Curran memorandums, plans to be reviewed and approved by the planning department. B, pay the traffic impact fees. C, conduct a pre-construction meeting in coordination with the senior planner. The meeting shall incorporate <coughs> shall include appropriate town staff, the developer and site and general contractor, among any others deemed necessary. And condition number two, prior to the issuance of the sign permit, the final sign design shall be reviewed and approved by the planning department. Second. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? That's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you very much. We appreciate your time. <laughs> Item number six, Layton Farm LLC requests the Second Amendment subdivision second amended subdivision plan review for Layton Farm subdivision, phases two through five, Elmwood Avenue, assessor's map R37, lot 1B and 3A. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, it's just noted, uh, this is a amended subdivision plan uh, for a conservation subdivision that is principally in the R2 district. The property is also encumbered by a, a bunch of resource protection land, which are ultimately going to be part of the open space for the project. Um, this project dates back to 2014 with the board, um, at which time it was uh, approved as a 97 lot residential subdivision. At that time, I think most boards, both, most board members will recall, there was an FAA tower on site, which required some um, uh, actually consideration by the Board of Appeals even at that time to allow the roadway to get by it. Well, subsequent to the, in the last two years, uh, the FAA and the developer have worked uh, together and now have removed the tower and the easement. And as the developer uh, informed the board back in the day that once that had been accomplished, they, he would seek some additional lots in that area. So um, this proposal is a request for two additional lots in the area. And the area is sort of the lots closest to the intersection of Layton Farm Road and Green Acres <coughs> Avenue. Um, so uh, it, the proposal doesn't change the infrastructure layout in any meaningful way other than some new stubs to lots. Um, there are some other minor adjustments to some lot lines as well. I think as the applicants gone through and developed some of their uh, started development, realized they could do a little lot reconfiguration. And then the other uh, minor um, component to this is a minor adjustment to the phasing line and I'm sure the applicant's uh, engineer will describe that for you in more detail than I can. Um, so um, I think at that at this point I'll turn it over to you. Thanks, Mr. Chair. Sure. And I will turn it back to Mr. Frank. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <coughs> Again, I'm Sean Frank with Sebago Technics. Uh, with me tonight is uh, Vincent Mayetta of uh, Leighton Farm LLC. Uh, as Jay did a wonderful recap, by the way, so I'll try to be brief. 
Uh, exactly. Uh, if you, as you all may recall, as part of the conservation subdivision design, we do the net residential area calculations, we do a conventional layout, uh, and then we do a, a conservation subdivision design. And it was kind of that negotiation process, if you will, from the plan between us and the planning board, uh, where in terms of the net residential allowed a certain number, uh, the conventional layout in terms of what we were thinking about uh, had some more lots, and I think we all agreed that 99 was the maximum number of lots of this. Uh, 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 parcel can handle. Uh, so we went through and got phase one approved, which is Owen Way, which is uh, pretty well constructed at this point in time. Uh, then came back and got phases two through five approved to the board. Um, and at that time, again, the issue still had been the FAA tower in constructing the roadway within the 140 <coughs> feet uh, and with two lots that were within that 140 feet. And as Jay said, uh, we certainly discussed at that point with the board is, you know, once the FAA tower was down, we'd be back to those two lots. And just to get everyone oriented, this is Elmwood. Uh, Owens is in this location here. Uh, it's actually started on the phase two. Uh, the change, as, as Jay has said, was basically adding a couple of lots right up through here where the old tower basically was. Uh, this had been the driveway coming down through here for the tower, and the tower had been basically right in this general area. Two lots, we still have a small wetland area here that'll be part of the open space. As you may recall, there's a, a large area down through here along a none such that's actually gonna be conveyed to the uh, town of Scarborough. Uh, if it hasn't already. Uh, again, these are kind of smaller lots because of the conservation subdivision design. What we were finding in phase one is if we had a little angle to these lots rather than being perpendicular to the road, it just made them a little difficult from a construction standpoint. So uh, if we figured we'd take advantage as part of this and go through and, and try to come up <coughs> with more perpendicular lot lines, if you will, throughout the phasing. Uh, so that's kind of led to some of the, uh, the adjustment within the lot lines. Uh, and we actually are asking to go down to this intersection, if you will, now uh, as part of phase two. We originally stopped it right through here, but just thought we might as well come down and get this piece as well, and grab these two lots, if you will, as part of this phase of construction. Uh, it, the stormwater is all the same along those lines, um, and the utilities. We have received uh, staff comments, uh, and we certainly will work with them in terms of uh, uh, they're absolutely right to uh, revise the uh, the plans to uh, uh, depict the stubs in the correct locations based upon those revised lot lines, um, and certainly we'll work with the engineer in terms of where the, uh, the stockpile areas will be. Uh, it certainly will be anticipated that, yes, Leighton Farm Road will be, you know, the main access road, construction access road, at least initially here, uh, as we go forward with future phases. So, uh, you know, we'll just have to uh, obviously uh, make the... Uh, the the future homeowners aware of that, that you know obviously there's a number of lots that'll be constructed uh, uh, further down through there and um, that, you know that's just going to be as and we'll just have to work with them as we go through that so um, uh, with that Mr. Chairman I conclude my presentation and it's again certainly between me and Mr. Miano we'd be happy to uh, answer any questions that the board may have thank you very much thank you um, this is another item where we have the opportunity for public comment if anyone out there is interested All right, I don't see anyone so how about you, Ron? No, I think this is pretty clear. I mean, it, it, that tower was an issue. Uh, the only comment I would have is that the uh, what staff has advised the applicant that the road can't be accepted until everything is all done and completed. And just, you know, be aware of that. Is that correct? Other than that, I think it's pretty straightforward, just adding to, to what's already in existence and trying to keep the neighbors happy as you build the building roads. Thanks, Nick? Yeah, I don't have a whole lot extra to add here either. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. Roger? Um, I don't have much to add either. I, I'm just kind of curious. Um, just one thing, when early on when you were here doing one of the presentations, there was a concern by Mr. Gruber, one of the uh, abutters, and about the Leighton, Leighton Road, Leighton Farms Road going in there next to his property. I assume that's been all resolved. Yeah, and, I, and again, as I recall, and I, I certainly, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that, though, because to be perfectly honest with you, I, I hadn't recalled. I think remember when we first went gone, had gone in there and cut the trees, and he, he thought there had been some drainage issues associated with that, but I told him, obviously, as we started working that road, that the road was actually lower than his land, so I thought, you know, we got the culverts in there and that type of thing, that we'd actually, I, I certainly didn't see how we could be damming any water on his property. It could only lead to, a, 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 you know, help facilitate, you know, the, the, the movement of the stormwater as it currently was existing. So uh, I, I have not heard from him uh, in, in quite some time. I, I, you. 
So yeah. we assume he's happy. <laughs> yeah, I have nothing else. Uh, sure. Well, I probably could add to that. Sure, Angel. Don't mind. <laughs> um, I have heard from Mr. Gerber, and I've actually met Mr. Um, Mayetta out on the site with, with Mr. Gerber, and we've kind of worked through. I think the two of them are working together and um, accommodating, I think, his concerns, I would say. And I have not heard back since then, since we had our plan in place on how to, I guess, alleviate some of his concerns, and I haven't heard anything negative beyond that. And, yeah. and again, I apologize. I didn't realize that had happened. <laughs> Perfectly honest with you. Thanks. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. My name is Vincent Mayetta. I'm the, uh, the owner of uh, Leighton Farms. I'm, I've had a numerous <coughs> uh, wonderful conversations with him. He's, he's just an, uh, an amazing neighbor. He's obviously concerned, as, as he mentioned to Angela, about a few things, and we've, uh, we've tried to take care of all those, and uh, He's just been great. So we're excited to be up there, and I, I don't think we have any more uh, issues to deal with, but if we do, we certainly would be happy to. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Robin? Yeah, I'd just like to um, echo staff comments regarding the need for construction sequence plan. Um, what parts are under construction right now? Owens Way has actually been constructed down to the Hammerhead right here, and the homes are all being constructed on that. Uh, right now, they're actually in the process of, uh, they built the, the stormwater management ponds down in this area, and they've been working on the infrastructure associated with uh, basically bringing Leighton Farm Road and the connection of Owens Farm back, uh, Owens Way back to the intersection. Is there a, is there a, a third party inspector on site? Oh, or? sure, yeah. Okay. okay, or is the contractor doing their own? No, no, certainly not. Not the town. Uh, it's a site location project, obviously, as well. So uh, DEP's been involved. And I don't have anything further, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Um, I don't really have much to add either. Um, the points been been made and acknowledged <coughs> about construction access and the town accepting the road. So um, don't need to belabor that. Belabor that. Um, yeah, I certainly would have taken the over on how long it would take to have the FAA agree to take that tower down, so congratulations on that. <laughs> um, didn't expect to see this one so soon, but um, glad to see that things are, are progressing. And um, with that, I will uh, make a motion for approval. I move to approve the application of Leighton Farm LLC for the second amended subdivision plan of the Leighton Farm subdivision represented by Sebago Technics. The proposed amendment enables the addition of two residential lots, modifies the existing phase plan, and reconfigures some of the existing lot boundaries. Based on the review of the application materials, I find that the proposal is consistent with the zoning requirements for the property and that the additional lots are within the allowed total residential density of the parent parcel. As part of the approval, payment of increased traffic assessment fees and recreational contribution fees will be required to mitigate impacts of the new lots. This approval recognizes that the existing conditions from the board approval dated June 22, 2015 remain in effect. As a condition of approval for this amendment and prior to releasing the signed mylar for recording, the applicant shall, one, revise the plan notes, and two, provide a revised construction set to address staff comments related to utility connections, <coughs> construction activities, and access. That's the motion. Second. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Thank you. Again, thank Sorry. you very much. All right, Corey, could yep. I ask Mr. Mayer a question before you leave? I'm just kind of curious about the phasing. Is it proceeding uh, quicker than you anticipated when you first started? Or? Yes, sir, it is. Okay. Yeah, we're very excited. Uh, Scarborough, of course, you know, is a very uh, exciting town to Develop in, and uh, we're excited to say it's uh, far ahead of where we expect it to be. Great. Okay, thank you. Great, thank you. <clears throat> Item number seven: Ballantine Development requests site plan review for Eastern Village Subdivision, Lot 118 South Village, Assessor's Map R37, R73 <coughs> rather, Lot 139. Jay. Yep. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, let's see. So this parcel is part of the uh, larger Eastern Village project. 
which is a residential, principally residential development um, that was uh, approved for 195 units. This lot, which is shown on the approved subdivision plan as lot 118, was always identified to be for multifamily uh, development, um, which the applicant is now before you with. <coughs> Pardon me. As part of staff's comments, we really tried to break up sort of looking at this project, starting sort of with the global subdivision and how this project fits in with that, and then um, then the board is also asked to really look at the specific site plan elements within the boundaries of this. Um, so to that end, um, really speaking of the overall more global subdivision elements, um, staff still has some questions with regards to how the proposal fits in with the overall uh, state permitting, particularly at the DEP level. And actually I'll ask Angela in a few moments to sort of speak to stormwater details, um, as well as DOT permitting. Um, part of the question there is, as, as my notes indicate, the lot was originally identified to be developed with 28 units back in, I think this project received approval in 2008. Um, there were 28 units identified for the, the parcel. Um, <coughs> subsequent to 08, the town has adopted uh, residential zoning factor, or I'm sorry, residential density factors in which smaller units can be counted as either half a unit or uh, two-thirds of a unit. So the applicant's actually seeking of those 28 units to really develop 53 units, principally all one bedroom, which count as half unit. And I think there were two two-bedroom, if I recall correctly. Um, so just, again, understanding how that unit count modifies any traffic impacts that might be associated with what was sort of counted for the overall subdivision and really how that interplays with the overall street network in town, intersections and the such. Um, I guess the other issue uh, we flagged is that there are some inconsistencies with the uh, approved space and bulk standards as part of the subdivision. Again, uh, um, this project is in the town and neighborhood uh, de development district, and really what that allows is for space and bulk standards to really be a negotiated process, so to speak. Um, there's a lot of flexibilities provided within this zone, <coughs> and so while those um, space and bulk standards are codified on the subdivision plan, they're not hard and fast. So if there are items that need to be adjusted, such as staff has suggested uh, lot area uh, per family, um, that could be looked at, um, provided that you know the applicant uh, wants to do that and the board's so inclined. Um, and then again, sort of last item on sort of the global subdivision issue uh, is with regards to affordable housing. Again, this project was approved for 195 units. Um, that's total units. Again, we've talked about how there's these uh, density factors that can be incorporated. Um, but of those 195, 13 of the units were to be affordable, and of which six were to be developed in this phase of the project. And so, again, um, just I think it would be good just to have a conversation and be sure that's still the intent and that's moving forward, which um, you know, staff doesn't see as an issue, but at least worthy of a conversation. Um, so that's sort of the, the issues, again, as we speak to the larger subdivision. Um, and then, um, as I noted, once we start to dial in just on the site proper, then we begin to look at the, the site plan review element specifically. Staff sort of has a host of comments, um, but I'll really focus on sort of the, the bigger ones. I think a lot of these are, 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 are fairly easy to resolve, but I think a couple of them, again, need to be, uh, might want to be addressed with regards to um, uh, potentially taking a look at the, uh, the access sort of into the site, um, and maybe this is more of a subdivision slash site plan discussion, really sort of the intersection where Eastern Road and, and it's a federal way or yes. federal way, which is the main access into the site, where the southerly access into this lot 118, how that all comes together. They're slightly offset, and there's sort of a lot of action happening there between vehicle <coughs> movement as well as the Eastern Trail. So um, just being sure that that's really looked at, and, and actually staff is hoping to maybe have a conversation with the applicant and maybe um, uh, in between this meeting and a uh, future meeting. I guess the other sort of uh, major or bigger design issue would be around the width of the parallel parking spaces. Um, 
on street parking has always been considered as part of this project, completely expected and anticipated. Um, just in looking at the seven feet that are being proposed, um, we just ask the applicant to really demonstrate the functionality of those to be sure that um, they're going to um, operate adequately. Um, so I think those are sort of the, the highlight items, if you will. Again, we have some other comments that I'm sure that the applicant and staff could work through um, in pretty easily. Um, but again, as I, I did say, I would like to have Angela take a few moments and, and just speak to what the uh, stormwater issues are. Um, so with that, Mr. Chair, if you don't mind, I'll turn it to Angela. Um, I have gone back and forth a few times um, talk, talking about Stormer with Steve Bush <coughs> and Tech, um, the design engineer, and um, I think it's noted in staff comments um, we discussed the increase in uh, peak flow rate from the site, and I, I know looking back at, um, if you look back at the last um, permit, which was really 2012, you're just showing this modest increase, um, but I think at the board should look at it more localized at looking back at pre-development, which we typically would. I'm not expecting to get back to pre-development, but I think it's a bigger conversation to say all these little incremental um, increases add up. And I know I've, I've talked to Steve a little bit about um, where this discharges, which is the culvert, and it should be noted that it has provided me with some information about how that culvert was sized. So it was in a in an earlier phase of the project that was replaced to accommodate the flooding issue that was overtopping apparently the eastern ro eastern road. Um, so he's showing calculations <coughs> that show that it does not flood out or flood over that roadway. However, there's other factors that we need to look at as far as um, the velocity that that would go through and the erosion um, possible erosion on the downstream side of that, which basically enters into the marsh, which is obviously one of the town's priority natural resources. So it, it's something that um, I think locally we need to look at um, and as you look at these, <coughs> these numbers and what is actually leaving the site. So um, that's all I just wanted to kind of highlight. Thank you. Thanks. That's helpful. Um, I just wanted, before we get into the board discussion, I wanted to just briefly um, point out to the board that given where the applicant is with DEP permitting and, the, and DOT permitting that um, we're obviously, and as well as some of these other details, we're not at the point yet where we'll be considering any approvals on this tonight, but there's still plenty to discuss um, and plenty for us to provide feedback and input on. Um, and before I hand off to um, the applicant, we do have the opportunity once again for public comment. If there's anyone so inclined? Once again, I don't see anyone. So, hand over to you. Actually, I'll I'll provide that opportunity again once the applicant has given his presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. I'm the owner of Val Valentine Development. I just want to speak to some of the staff comments that <clears throat> Angela and Jay have talked about, and give this board a uh, chance to uh, understand kind of the process that Eastern Village has evolved from when it got approved back in 2007 to where we are today. Um, Steve Bushy from Stantex, uh, my engineer, and he can speak more to the engineering issues, but um, you know, Eastern Village was always envisioned to not be a uh, meeting the standards type of development for the town. We got many exceptions and, um, with respect to bulk and space, with respect to road geometries. Uh, we don't, we don't uh, support uh, lining up intersections. We purposely put those at a non 90 degree uh, area. Um, we've got a two acre site here that we're proposing 53 uh, multifamily units on and we've got comments in here that talk about speed bumps. Uh, I'm sure the board's aware but just west of the turnpike here, uh, a two acre lot, and this isn't even a two acre lot, uh, will support one housing unit. We've got 53 here so um, speed bumps, you know, it's just it just seems like a bit much, but nevertheless, it's comments, and um, you know, I want to make sure that the current board understands that Eastern Village was granted many exceptions when it got unanimous approval back in 2007, uh, and mostly with road geometries as well as bulk and space and whatnot. Um, 
The other thing that was mentioned as far as parking spaces, uh, it's our belief that cars will be getting smaller and lighter uh, for one reason, and that is that they have to. So we're more than comfortable with where we're at with the design, and uh, we'd like to get it built as get going on the construction of it as soon as possible. We originally came in and saw the town three years ago with a slightly different version. Uh, <coughs> didn't quite like it as much as um, I wanted to, so I held off and spent the next couple years really trying to figure out what made the most sense over here. And this is what we have, and we, uh, we obviously um, feel very strongly about it, what its success will be. And um, we came to you about eight months ago with this project and uh, left with the feeling that, uh, you know, you were happy with what you saw and that you look forward to seeing us return. We submitted a pre-application review back in uh, August and got a couple pages of comments and then um, did the best we could to address those, um, given the fact that I think Jay may have been on vacation then and there was some vacation issues there and possibly all of the comments may have not come to us, but at the same time, we then submitted for uh, the approval we're seeking tonight and we got seven pages of comments, so it was a little bit um, frustrating and that's why I wanted to make sure that I addressed the board and gave kind of a brief history about um, what Eastern Village is and that back in 2007, the train kind of left the station with those allowances, exceptions to the standards, being that the standards that the town uses, I believe, are conventional. This is not a conventional project. And, um, and that, you know, nine years later, eight amendments later, thousands of feet of road later, many families living in the neighborhood later, we'd like to stay to the same type of development pattern that we started with. And this certainly, we believe, uh, facilitates that. And we look forward to uh, discussing it more further with you and hopefully get these issues resolved so we can get under construction since everybody else in town is planning apartments all over the place. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chair, if, if I might just, I just want to sure. uh, just touch on the, on the pre-application process. Um, we'll note that we did receive a partial application in August to which we provided some comments, but they were cursory since the application wasn't complete at that time. We didn't do a complete and thorough review, but we did provide a cursory round of comments. So I do agree that those were sort of intermittent, but that is, that's the rationale that went behind that. So, Thank you. Mr. Bushy. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Steve Bushy with Stantec. Provided the engineering here, and Mr. Anderson has gone through a little bit, but what I'd like to do is walk you through our site plan, our layout plan, uh, a little rendering. gives you a little bit of a graphic to get some understanding, and maybe I can touch upon a few of the points on the drainage and some of the permitting pieces <coughs> and so forth that come through uh, with the staff comments. Moving forward, we would expect uh, we'll be resubmitting uh, to a full package uh, addressing all of the comments that we have received from both staff and uh, uh, the peer review uh, team. So I think we'll be able to address these things. And, and frankly, a lot of them, I think, are, are, are some pieces that probably with a sit down with staff, as Jay had alluded to, uh, will probably go a long ways to maybe uh, buttoning some things up. But as uh, Mr. Anderson had discussed, the theme here behind the project, it's a 1.76 acre uh, parcel. So it's, it's not a real big area. And the theme has always been within Eastern Village as you drive down through there, that it is uh, far more tight than the standard or the traditional approach. And I think there's some, uh, the idea behind that has been to get something with some density, some tightness. Uh, what it results in, many might argue, would be uh, a tight knit neighborhood, one that would promote more pedestrian friendliness with walking, bicycling, and that type of thing, and probably less promotion of, uh, you know, fast through traffic of the neighborhood and so forth. So when we talk about some of the dimensional pieces that have taken place, at least with this layout, have to kind of have that set of glasses on, I suppose, to a certain extent of understanding okay, what is this type of living area going to, to be like. So we've got 53 units, 51 of which are going to be uh, one bedroom units, and then there are two two bedroom units. And we've got a number of buildings here, and I'll quickly go down through them. 
buildings here, and I don't recall off the top of my head uh, A, B, <coughs> C, how they're, they're labeled here, but uh, these first two units here with a connection would have eight units each in them, and then uh, five units in this building, five units in this building, 12 units over in this far building here, and then nine units in this building, and then six more in this building. Now, uh, staff had made uh, a very good comment that uh, Carrie and I talked about, in fact, today, which was a, a phasing approach. And right now, we hadn't necessarily shown you that this project would be a, a phased project and it would be built all at, one, uh, all at once was our uh, thinking. And perhaps in this next round of uh, plan submissions, we will be giving you a, a phasing uh, plan. I won't go specifically into what that is yet. We haven't probably figured that exactly out, but it's uh, a good comment from staff about uh, approaching the project now as a, a phased uh, type design. Right now, a uh, project that has been constructed as part of the Eastern Village piece is the Federal Way out to Eastern Road and then Richards Way here. Before I neglect it here, this is the uh, subdivision plan. So just to give you some sense of the main entrance here, <coughs> we're on this side of the project. This is the area that I'm showing here in red that has generally been constructed out and has uh, occupied dwellings generally and making its way out to Eastern Road. So the Eastern Road here over to Black Point Road. And so our lot of interest is this lot 118 right in here. And they, again, 1.76 acres. We're going to talk about in a little bit the uh, the pond that has been constructed. So this is the large new pond as it's been referenced in oh so many submissions going back to 2006 and realize how many uh, submissions had been made from 2006 through 2012, uh, both locally with the, uh, the town as well as the DEP. But this is the, the large stormwater management pond that basically serves the bulk of the property for uh, uh, water quality treatment as well as the flood control uh, issues. There is another pond, though, the Ballantine Pond, uh, over in this area here. I'm not sure exactly where it is that, that serves the project, uh, principally the area that's already been constructed. So the new pond is a, a larger piece that will serve the bulk of the remaining property to be developed. Carrie just made mention the phasing for the project in the subdivision, in the most recently approved eighth amended subdivision plat is basically nine phases, and this is was 3B for this lot development. So you can see where we're still uh, picking away at things. So the development here includes a new access point onto Richards Way here and here, and then a new driveway here into what staff's comments have <coughs> discussed is this intersection here with the alignment uh, of not only this driveway as an intersection to uh, this piece of constructed road, but its uh, alignment with what would be a reconstructed component of the Eastern Road. Eastern Road today is a straight piece of road here, and we're looking at bringing that and more or less teeing it up with this new piece. So there will be some reconstruction that will take place, and that's always been part of the, the plans per se, so that Eastern Road would not be a straight piece uh, as it is today. We've got narrower driveways and, and access drives here, as Carrie has alluded to, so 20-foot wide, uh, two-way directional. But on a number of the locations here, as I'm pointing out, we have some parallel spaces as well, and those parallel spaces are currently measuring at about roughly seven foot wide, 20 to 22 foot long. So they're a little narrow, but that is the goal of the project. Uh, we've got some other things going on with respect to the sidewalks. We've got sidewalks effectively all throughout and around all of the, the structures. We've got some parallel spaces. Are, uh, along this side, and then the perpendicular space is generally on the outside of uh, uh, in the northern side of the, the project here. We've got 82 parking spaces throughout, so more perpendicular spaces down here, a few more over 
on the far easterly side also. Got some areas for turnaround, and the staff has talked about and requested uh, evidence through some auto turn traffic diagrams that would show how single unit vehicles, in particular uh, ambulance, uh, would be able to have access through here, and we will provide that information as part of our subsequent submission here to show how circulation does work with vehicles and it uh, will work for the emergency vehicles. The layout contemplates the placement of solid waste trash enclosures with some building, smaller building covered spaces here and here, as well as down out behind this building. We've got yard areas in this particular plan is showing a landscaping. I think I counted them up, 57, 58 trees to be planted throughout the area. Uh, the pattern along Richards Way is consistent with what were the originally approved plans going back eight or nine years ago. Similarly, some plantings along this piece uh, of connection to the Eastern Trail, which will ultimately be built out out along the Eastern Road, which is not there today because Eastern Road basically is acting as the, the trail, so to speak. And that is part of this project is to construct that Eastern Trail piece, uh, as I'm pointing out here. We've got utilities that are all stubbed out within Federal and Richards Way for water, sewer, storm drainage, and natural gas, underground power are all there and will be extended into the, uh, to the layout here to serve each one of these individual buildings. These will be uh, partially slab on grade with partial basements. Uh, there won't be a full basement for the entire building space. Each of these building spaces, I believe footprint wise, are roughly 1,700 square feet uh, on the smaller areas to as much as 35, 3,800 square feet for the larger rectangular buildings. Uh, total Square footage with each one of these buildings, though, goes up to roughly 5,000 square feet, so they're multi-story multi buildings. <coughs> Architect's rendering shows you how the building styles will, will look here with a multi-level gabled end buildings, pitched roofs, clapboard siding. Staff has asked a few questions about uh, color patterns and so forth, so we'll address those things, but um, we'll give more information. We had provided some building elevations and floor plans, uh, preliminary floor plans, but the building elevations were, uh, were shown as part of our submission package. Uh, to one question in regards to uh, architecture, there's a small post office uh, building here, which is uh, uh, kind of a, a pet project of, of Carey's. He had seen a, a similar type building to serve a, a development in another state, and uh, he's got the goal of trying to uh, uh, replicate that type of uh, building approach within this space. It's going to be a little post office uh, piece, and there were some comments in regards to the signage there, so we'd like to work through those things because it has got some uh, high character that he'd like to be able to bring to the to the project. So uh, we're hopeful if folks want to see that tonight, Kerry can present that. We'll work through that with uh, with staff though as to the the layout. So this particular rendering is looking from basically the west towards uh, uh, Richards Way. So these were the front units with that connection piece, and there is a walk through to the sidewalk piece here to the center courtyard the buildings in the background and then the building over towards the far easterly side. This building will contain the ADA units as well. Site plan, here's that ADA, building containing the ADA uh, units and we have our ADA spaces over here so our ADA route would be uh, along this sidewalk area into that doorway at the front of the building. So drainage-wise, we have stormwater management system that's going to include a closed collection system, catch basins, pipe, and so forth. Staff <coughs> has made a comment with regard to our grading, uh, our grading for the project, and uh, we're uh, doing a little non-traditional type approach. Traditionally, in a street access drive configuration, you'd have catch basins off along a curb line, and in our case, we've decided to put the catch basins more uh, or less in the middle of uh, the driveways, we're going to have a low spot, as an example, right in this little four-way intersection. 
uh, ultimately that pipe network network will come out to uh, uh, Richards Way and connect to the existing drainage system that has been installed. So I pointed out earlier where the large wet pond is. And that wet pond, uh, going back to 2006, its original design capacity uh, included certainly this lot as well as uh, quite a bit of other area within the development. Back in uh, 2012, though, there was a couple of changes that were made, and some of the area of the development uh, were rerouted and actually put to the Ballantyne Pond. And the, at that time, there was some new permitting that was done with not only the town, uh, but the DEP. The new pond, though, its design uh, was never changed, uh, probably no specific reason behind that and ultimately it became an oversized pond uh, because some of the about 11 acres of, of development area were taken away uh, and redirected from originally being uh, thought <coughs> to be conveyed to that pond, but now that 11 acres, its drainage all goes to the uh, so-called Ballantine Pond. So that left the new pond with some excess capacity, and one of the things that we pointed out, uh, we have a couple of things going on right now with not only the eastern uh, village development, but also the Bessie Square development. The Bessie Square development, as you may recall, up on Route 1, that's a smaller piece of property. Uh, that was developed and is now currently actually being uh, hopefully completed for the second phase of development at that site. Drains to uh, an upper town pond, like that's the term we've, we've referenced now, uh, off of Ward Street. And it's actually located on this property. shown on this map here, the town pond is right here. So Bessie Square being up on Route 1 is just slightly off the page here to the north, let's say, and its water uh, generally drains down in this pattern to the town pond. And uh, to one of the questions and comments that the staff has made regarding DEP permitting, we have submitted a modification application to the DEP because the Bessie Square drainage system, uh, we have basically asked for an approval from the department as well as the town for uh, taking the water, the storm water that still continues to go to the town pond, but the water quality functions of this town pond are going to be transferred to the new pond since the new pond has plenty of excess capacity to provide water quality benefits uh, for that. So this town pond will remain in place and continue to act for the flood control benefits that it, it currently has and will continue in the future. And uh, the new pond will then uh, act for not only the Eastern Village, but the Bessie Square Village. And that's why uh, we've submitted to DEP for uh, a modification. As far as the Eastern Village is concerned, this project, we're uh, of the feeling that Threshold-wise, the amount of impervious area that has been uh, approved as part of the entire development, we're nowhere near that yet because the project hasn't been built out. Now, staff has pointed out that, uh, and we had put in our submission materials, the fact that there has been a 16,000 square foot, roughly a third of an acre increase in impervious that had been calculated for uh, our <coughs> current lot development. Not sure how that worked out over the course of time, but that's a fairly minor increase, and we're still at <coughs> the threshold numbers of 70% impervious for the lot. We haven't exceeded that, uh, so we're okay in that regard. So we're still feeling like we have lots of capacity remaining and left and have shown that in the numbers and the calculations for the new pond. So uh, that's where we stand with that. I'm, I'm feeling we're still going to need to go through some more uh, explanation uh, and discussion with the staff. Uh, to Angela's point, her pieces that she and I have talked about include the discharge here from the new pond. We have a new culvert that was installed by the developer here for Eastern Village. Uh, fairly substantial investment in the infrastructure for a new culvert going under the Eastern Road. The numbers that have always gone uh, to this project beginning back in 2006 all the way through ultimately uh, approved multiple times uh, as recent of 2012 had increases in discharge at the Eastern Road 
and uh, our more recent calculations have shown the same type of differences between pre and post development. I think we just need to continue to walk through the numbers and making sure that Angela as well as the department, ultimately DEP, are continue to be happy with the discharge numbers. Angela's made reference to a couple of items such as outflow velocity from that culvert, making sure there is not, are not any conditions or problems with that. I think we're com comfortable enough that we'll be able to work through those pieces uh, without any particular issues. So um, I think we're, we're close. Probably still have one more meeting here with staff to uh, make sure we can get through any final uh, additional items. Uh, but I think we're, we're close uh, as far as that's concerned. A few other items that staff have men mentioned, uh, lighting as an example. So we have 16 uh, light poles that are being proposed throughout the area. Uh, we provided a photometric plan from Swaney Lighting. I think we probably uh, want to just get a little bit more information from Swaney. Uh, for the coverages uh, and to address a few of the staff comments and we will do so but uh, the lighting fixture here being proposed is in keeping and consistent with lighting that's already been installed throughout much of the constructed development piece so uh, staff has raised a few questions about uh, maybe more lighting on the buildings and I think that's a piece that we have to work through with not only the, the applicant but the, the uh, architect as well uh, to assure what we might have for building on the lighting if it's security uh, uh, lights over doors or that type of thing. Uh, so we will do that. Otherwise, this site really, as Carrie had mentioned, has been part of the development for a long time now. And uh, I think the themes of uh, a, a tighter, somewhat non-traditional layout uh, are part of the vision that he's had for a long time now. And so he's looking to continue that. And I think if uh, those of you who have gone down through the Eastern Village and, and seen what he's done with uh, the level of construction, the level of landscaping, uh, and so forth, thus far I think it's been a, a pretty good success. And I think he's looking to, to carry that through. So that will conclude my presentation for now. And I'm sure we'll have lots of questions to go through. Thank you. Thank you. I don't, don't think we had any public comment out there. <coughs> um, so we'll begin uh, the board discussion now, or continue the board discussion. Um, just to quickly highlight, sort of reset things, um, as Jay had mentioned in his intro, there are a couple of items in particular that I think um, we'll want to hear from board members on in terms of uh, their level of comfort or, or lack thereof, um, one being on space and bulk standards, the, essentially the density, um, uh, that's item number 3-1 three, uh, three in, the, in the staff comments, another being the, the parking space dimensions, and obviously there are a number of other things as well, but I just wanted to flag those. Um, and also just make a brief comment about the, you know, sort of the history of this, as, as Carrie uh, alluded to and Jay, Jay spoke about as well. Um, this was, um, you know, a, a, by definition, very different right out of the, right out of the gate. Um, and I think, you know, the board at the time, I know the board at the time was very excited about it, and um, I definitely still am. You know, it's been a challenge at times because there have been eight or nine amendments and you know some incremental changes here and there and that's fine um, but I do think that you know sometimes it's helpful to kind of take a step back and sort of look at where we are overall and I would just offer that just because we have made a lot of exceptions and granted a lot of relief in the past doesn't necessarily mean that it's sort of carte blanche to um, to uh, do whatever and continue to make changes and I think it's perfectly appropriate for us to revisit some of these things. We may very well end up agreeing to them and that's that's fine but um, I think as a, as a matter of process it's perfectly appropriate so that's my little disclaimer or spiel. Um, who wants to start off on board discussion? Roger? <laughs> that looked like a nod. Um, okay. Um, 
I would just like to make a comment about your last comment, if I may. Because um, I have followed this project as a citizen very closely, as, as close, I think, as any citizen could. And um, I, I think it's a great project. Um, and I think it's uh, gone along quite well. Um, you, uh, Carrie mentioned speed bumps, for instance. I, I don't recall anything in here about speed bumps. I don't recall writing anything about speed bumps. Okay. But I was going to say, when you drive through there, you... Oh, it is? Okay. When you peer, drive peer review or okay. something. When like you drive that. through it, you can't go that fast. It's designed not to go mm -hmm. that fast, you know? Right. Um, uh, in fact, I, the, only, the only criticism I would have with the whole project, possibly, is that the roads are maybe too narrow in the wintertime when there's snow, because I've been down there in the winter. And I think that could be a, that could be a problem, you know. So, but um, the other thing I was going to ask Jay, um, I know there's been a number of <coughs> amendments, <coughs> changes. Sure. Uh, as and since I've been on the board, most of them have been like uh, alignments of lots and mm -hmm. you know, which I consider sort of minor things. Um, you know, changes in mm -hmm. you know designated certain lots and things like that, and. Um, and I, I believe this this location where these are, this we're talking about tonight that was always part of the original plan. You know, the multi uh, multi-family right. yep. places. So it's identified for yeah. multi-family dwellings. The only change has been recently in the number of units that can go into these buildings. Yeah, there's sort of two two questions I think principal questions that um, need to be looked at it, you know one is the increase in units but that that's a function of the of the town adopting the the residential density right, yeah, factors yeah, yeah. and that actually was part of a subsequent or maybe even two of the last amendments um, particularly when uh, mr. Anderson uh, received approval to uh, incorporate cottage houses um, and um, some other smaller um, type single-family dwellings um, the other one, the other issue um, that's on this on the subdivision note that staff flagged is the notion of um, under multifamily <coughs> talks about the need for there to be 1,500 square feet of lot area per family. Sort of each unit is con considered sort of a family function, if you will. So when you divide the number <coughs> of the, the square footage of the lot by 1,500, it actually comes to 51 units. Now, that's not to say that the board and applicant couldn't consider mod just modifying that space and bulk standard. Um, and I think I even flagged, <clears throat> I think I noted that that space and bulk standard was actually modified, I think, with the Sixth Amendment and went from 2,000 square feet per family to 1,500 square per feet per family. And it might have been around the time when we started thinking about the residential factors. Um, so, um, yeah, as, as Mr. Fellows just said, the board has looked at these things and sort of reconsidered them, and so um, you know it, it may be appropriate to do so again. Um, provide the applicants sort of describe for the board, you know, mm. what they're seeking exactly and, and how that would look. Um, so I hope I answered your question. Yeah, basically you did. Okay. <laughs> um, I guess my point is, um, from the very inception of this plan, I. From my perspective, I don't think there's been significant changes to the original plan as it was originally laid out. There's been a number of changes, but they mm -hmm. haven't been significant. So I, I think it's important that I think the developer has basically been following the plan as, as he originally envisioned it being. And um, and I've been through a number of, a number of developments like this. Uh, this reminds me of the <coughs> corporation down in Florida. What you're trying to do here, and I think it's terrific. Um, so that's that's the only point I was going to make. I just wanted to make, you know, again, as a, as a, as a citizen who's followed this, um, I, for whatever it's worth. The um, going back to this situation right now, though, I, I do have a question about the in, the um, access point going on to federal. Was there ever any consideration of not having that access there and just having the one, the two on Richards? Um, well, I'm, not, I'm not quite sure I understand what you're refer what you're asking, but the one down there, as you, yeah, that one. <coughs> yeah. Um, well, we don't want to create a dead end right here. 
dead ends are just that, dead. So we wanted to have the street come in here, street come in here, street come in here, given the nature of what we're trying to do here. Um, one of the reasons why the road geometry is the way that it is, is when we got an easement through Inland Fisheries and Wildlife, which owns the, has the fee in the property, the, the eastern road, they would only give it to us to a, to a certain point. So that's the reason why we have kind of this alignment that we really didn't want. Uh, but given the situation with, East, with uh, IF&W only willing to extend that down from Black Point Road so far, mm -hmm. we had to work with what we had. Okay. But, um, you know, we do wish that this wasn't, you know, quite the way that it is because it is tight. Um, but, you know, certainly causes people to slow down, and that's exactly what we want. Yeah, uh, the reason I asked is I, I actually went through there, too, on my way down to the other property I saw. And um, when I went in there, I had to, when I was making the, the, the turn, I had, I had <coughs> to stop because there was another car coming the other way. And uh, that could be because we weren't sure where the <laughs> roads were and things like that. But um, I just thought if there was any consideration of eliminating that access point, you know. You're talking about this one right here? Yeah, just, just because it would be. Um, again, it, uh, we really don't want to do it because what it's going to create is a dead space. Yeah, I understand. And we're, we're, it's, it's, it's kind of an urban feel to what we're trying to do here, and that would, that would certainly um, compromise it. <coughs> Okay, the other, the other question, and I'm, I'm, I'm purposely staying away from all the um, ground, groundwater thing because I know there, there are other people who want to talk about that. <laughs> um, the, uh, the little building you have for the post office, mm -hmm. um, is in lieu of that, would you just have regular those, those uh, metal mailboxes? Is that what would be there if you didn't have that little? I'd rather die. Pardon me? Yeah. I'd rather die. No, I understand that, but I mean, isn't that what you have throughout the rest of the location? Those mm, no, we've got regular, you know, mailbox, oh, just a regular post, mailbox? and a mailbox. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. Um, I don't, I don't know. It's, 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 it's not. We're, not well, there's a, there's a few reasons for this, frankly. Um, one of the one of the things that's going on, um, that's big, is uh, online retailing. And there are several apartment projects across the country that never envisioned the amount of online retailing that takes place. Okay. And there is several apartment companies that have refused to actually take packages anymore. And of course, tenants are furious. Um, you know, online retailing wasn't nothing 20 years ago, or maybe even 10 years ago. But today, it's huge. And I also think that that's the future. So we want to make sure that we've not only got a place where people can pick up their mail under cover, um, under shelter, but also a place where the FedEx, the UPS, the postman can go and drop off online retailing packaging. In fact, you may know this, I don't know, but the post office actually travel, uh, works Sundays. Yeah. And they work Sundays strictly to handle online retailing, something they've never done in the history of the post office being in business. So that's how big online retailing is. That's what you can expect for, po for flow packaging or packaging flow. And uh, we want to make sure that we uh, have a place for it, we acknowledge it, and uh, uh, afford the opportunity to let it occur without having packages just leaned up against the doors everywhere and, or get stolen or whatnot. So, yeah. um, When you were here last, too, uh, Carrie, you mentioned charging stations. Yep. You thought you might like to have charging stations. Yep. W where would they be on there? Well, we haven't decided that yet. We're still, uh, we're still trying to understand whether we want to have them in some of these areas up by the buildings. Um, but that gets, again, back to smaller cars, yeah. which will be <coughs> the type of demographic we believe we're going to see here. And, you know, bigger cars aren't going to be looking to charge them because there is no, no, no ability to charge them. It will only be in a small car function. Okay. Um, I, think, I think that's all I have. Thanks, Roger. Robin? Sure. So I like your vision of the future um, as far as, you know, um, community and village living, accommodating for online shopping, accommodating for electric cars. Um, I guess, you know, I get, uh, 
what do you what do you see the future as as far as um uh, development, con you know, like I was the person on the board asking you if low impact development would be considered in any of this in any way, porous pavement, and I know that you've gotten a lot of, um, I know that this is a, 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 a model project to, to sort of, uh, that wasn't meant to meet the standards, but that was meant to be a, a demonstration or a pilot project, and I think um, there's a lot of positives to that. I think there there really is. Um, but I just want to know if the vision for the future incorporates things like low impact development or um, green infrastructure concepts or you know uh, green streets and the like. This is all permitted right here. This is permitted DOT wise. And this pond down here was built to take this uh, impervious area. Um, I'm not an engineer, so I can't, tell you, I can't tell you what that is. Yep. Steve can obviously tell you. But all of the infrastructure throughout here is based on catch basin, point discharge. And so much of it's been built that um, without going and ripping up pavement, I don't know how we'd be able to implement it, any of it in the current design. As far as 3B goes or the multifamily project we've got before you right now, um, I don't know enough about impervious pavement. I do know that I spent $150,000 of my money fixing a problem down here that the town had, washing out the road and exposing gas lines. I had other ways I could have run the stormwater, but it seemed like... Um, a fairly good compromise between myself and the town to fix a problem, we go that way. Um, and um, I think right now with the current infrastructure we've got in place, it seems that to me that given the cost and the size of this that it would continue to go there. So uh, this being a different phase, maybe there's some opportunity to do something up there, but I don't know how we do it here and I don't know how we do it here. I don't um, know if that's answered your question, but... Not really. Are you in a floodplain right there? No, we're not in the floodplain. Um, you're not in the mapped floodplain? No. Uh, even when they revised them uh, in 2012? Well, I'm not sure what the floodplain is now. It used to be nine, but these elevations up here are in the uh, 20s. Existing. I think actually, uh, I think actually 30s. 30s. So what natural areas are being maintained? Any at all? We've got landscape dust and nuts. We've got... Uh, Carrie, Carrie, sorry. You need to come back up so they can hear you on the mic. I, I'm not sure I can answer your question if I didn't answer it before. Yeah. I'm certainly willing to try, but um, again, we have an approved project based on uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars of infrastructure that have been put in to uh, take the development based on the design that we have. So are you asking if I'm, are you asking me to change something about I'm the, okay, I'm not sure what you're asking me. Okay, your site, I'm sensing a little tension, I guess, and I no. want to just really call it out and say I'm asking really just to understand what part of your site is maintained uh, natural uh, area, or is it all being reworked? Um, I'm not sure if I follow you, but phase five, six, and Steve, seven. can you help them out? What's the disturbed area there? The disturbed area is the developed area. For Eastern Village or just our lot area that we're here? Um, why don't you point out to me what part is Eastern Village, what you're calling Eastern Village, because I'm, you know I'm new to the planning board, so. Yeah, that's what I, I kind of sense that maybe yeah. we had a step back here and talk about first the broader picture of Eastern Village, which is basically represented here by this entire subdivision plan. Rather than taking the mic. 
So Eastern Village really ex extends all the way around this entire perimeter. And what we've tried to represent and show on this drawing are the various phases. So you right. kind of see these shaded areas. So the areas that I mentioned here originally are the areas that have been constructed more or less in this area. Sure and most of the houses. What's your total house count right now? You're in the 50s? Mm, yeah, we're in the 50s. And the, the phase that we're talking about now, C? 3B over in this location. Right and okay. so federal has been constructed. And then the pond really is the only place <coughs> that the, the currently under construction phase is this area right in here. Okay. And so I'm, I'm going to jump around a little bit here to talk to me about the Bessie Square Pond. Um, wasn't there a requirement that the best the Bessie Square Pond need to be developed in order to get uh, the O'Reilly's? Is that two different things? Am I mixing two different things? Those are two different projects, correct. Okay. Yeah. All right. So we can't bring into we can't talk about that then. The fact that there needs to be a pond up up there. There well, is a pond up there, but I'm not. I don't know how that. But the way it's pertinent is. Um, when we talk about, yes, you're per you've been permitted uh, as of 2007 to move forward kind of a thing. But, Steve, 10 years before that in 2007, what were 2000, 10 years before 2007, 1997, what were the development standards like then? What did, we, what did we develop for? Mostly flood control. Flood control, exactly. So when we know better, we do better. And I'm not saying that. You need to do anything better here, Carrie. I just, I just want to try to understand, I guess, if as we build, we're incorporating sort of new ways of thinking. Like, I like how you're thinking about electric cars, and I love how you're thinking about the online community. But there's also, I think, these other aspects of, of, of treating the stormwater in place, of understanding that there's groundwater and that there's going to be flooding potential and resiliency issues here to think about kind of a thing. So because this has been spread out over almost 10 years now, and I get that, you know, there have been, way, you know, I'm looking at your site plan review checklist, there have been a number of waivers that you've been granted, and all. I just, I just want to open the conversation so that it, it's not so tense kind of a thing and understand what is currently there and what we can do to, to sort of, um, to serve all needs because I love how you're thinking about you know the future and and what the future holds kind of a thing um, but I think we need to to really think about um, uh, water as a resource instead of a waste byproduct because we're right on the edge of Scarborough Marsh and I, and I don't mean to be editorial here I guess but but as part of and I'm not talking as a citizen, I'm talking about the Scarborough standards are, are going to be, I think, given some consideration. I think, you know, the staff is, has, I, I, I sense your frustration with going back and forth with the staff and seven pages of comments and the like, but they're very, they're, they're very gr good professionals that, you know, you can, you can get some good information from and I think I've said too much, but I just I just want to try to diffuse the, the tension. I'm just feeling a lot of tension, and I want to try to get to the bottom of it. Maybe I can uh, just add one thing, because subtle discussion between Carrie and I with respect to our lot, Yeah. Uh, because I was a new player, more or less, involved <laughs> with the, the development uh, from the engineering side of things. I picked up and have now helped carry on this particular project into one of the questions about, you know, so the drainage systems that he's now installed and to his point of uh, the amount of economic impact that that has, putting pipes in the ground and uh, uh, constructing the facilities and in particular because he just really finished this new pond mm -hmm. uh, just this past year. So that pond though is basically a state-of-the-art pond meets all of the current standards. How relative. is it meeting treatment, Steve? Because I know you're, it's, it's quantity, but it's also treatment. What kind it's of treatment? A, it's a wet pond. Uh, so it's so got the gravel bench wetland it's, area that the wet pond drains into. It's got the, the depth bench. and length, the width, and all of those standard wet pond criteria for design uh, for the water quality pieces, basically as outlined under Chapter 500 and uh, the BMP. So 
That said, you know, we had that discussion about what was happening with uh, our current <coughs> project and what we were doing for the drive aisles. And we had this discussion. He was explaining to me his vi vision about um, getting away from the traditional, mm -hmm. i.e. 24 or 26 or 28 foot wide driveways and bigger roads. But when you do that, you have more land to develop when you narrow down roadways and driveways. And so I'm, I'm going to cut my comments short and, and defer to my colleagues because okay. I, 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 don't, I, I take offense at the frustration with the staff because I think the staff has been uh, very accommodating. And I also recognize that when you narrow down your streets and you narrow down parking, that gives you more area to develop yeah, and, and sell. I understood. Um, to slow down speed. And I'm not, and I'm not, I'm not mad at staff by any means, but what I kind of got from the comments was um, you're asking us to um, show us how this is incorporated into Eastern Village, and we're showing it to you, but then you're saying, well, um, it just seems to me that it's got to remain kind of one way. And with the, with the comments that I got back, um, if we go and we do this differently than what Eastern Village is like, then we're not in keeping with the Eastern Village kind of tradition, if you will. Uh, the roads I, are... I'd, the road like to, I'd like to, I hate to interrupt, but I, you know, we've been on this topic now for about an hour, and I think we need to sort of move on, and I, could, I completely understand what you're saying, and I, I think the, the staff comments are meant to sort of highlight things for the board to discuss, and we can, we can act as, as, as we will within our, within our discretion, and I don't think anyone's trying to say that things have to be one way or, or another. Um, and we've, we've heard you, and I think we've, we've registered and acknowledged that. And I just want to make sure that we can move on so that we can continue to have a constructive conversation because I think sometimes what happens if we get too far into the weeds is that there's sort of a diminishing return, and that's not good for you, it's not good for us. And um, I do appreciate your, your concerns, though. Are, are you all set, Robin? Yes, I am. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Uh, Ron? Well, I'm going to defer most of my comments to the present board and future board since this is my last meeting, so I'll let the present and future board handle most of it. But uh, I do have a couple of questions that have concerned me for a while. <coughs> the flow of traffic, is it a two ways or one way the way the flow of traffic goes? Two way. See, I, I have a lot of concern, and I have stated this in the past, and I'll repeat myself right now, about, and then, as was mentioned, then w when we have a snowstorm on top of it all, I, I just don't see how it works. Uh, I can't put it any plainer than that uh, as far as the flow of traffic and, and the one going around the other, and even how if there's traffic on the streets, how fire engines are going to be able to, get through there in case of an emergency. So I just want that before I leave for the record of my concern. My second question, which re revolves around that, is how many new units are going in this new phase? 53. Is there enough parking spaces allocated for the amount of anticipated occupancy? We have 82 parking spaces. Okay. Um, and, and my last comment, uh, and Jay had mentioned it earlier, and I, and I haven't heard anything um, about affordable housing. Is that on, on track? As I understand it, it, it is. Carrie might be able to speak more to okay. that. Like I said, I'll defer it to the present and future committees. Thanks. Thanks, Ron. Nick? Okay. I will try not to belabor any of the points made <coughs> so far, um, but I, I do want to reiterate um, Corey's initial remarks, which which are just because a project has been done one way in the past doesn't mean we don't have the right to reconsider how it's being done now. And I think a case in point here is your parking. I find a big problem with this. As much as your vision for the future is a bunch of smart cars, I'm still required to exit a vehicle with a certain amount of space between me and the next vehicle. Um, and until you find a way to ban pickup trucks, SUVs from 2000 and on, uh, you're going to need more 
space between these parking lot spaces than you currently have. That being said, once you do that, you are going to find yourself less, you have less parking than what's going to be required of you, given the number of units. So <clears throat> while that might be your vision that we all have smaller cars, what I see here is a problem getting enough parking spaces to correspond with the number of units you'd like to have. So I think that needs to be a consideration, and I think it sh that is something I'd like staff to look at carefully. I, uh, <laughs> I'll leave it at that. I'm just going to leave it right there. And it's unless staff needs something else out of me on a preference anywhere else on this. All right. Thank you, Nick. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I uh, just sort of picking up on uh, Mr. McGee, I, I have similar concerns about the, about the parking and, and I, you know, I absolutely, as I did back when this was first approved, I totally buy into the concepts here. I understand the street alignments. I understand the, 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 that narrow streets slow speeds and I completely understand the, the urban, the new urban sort of concept here. Um, and, the, but this is, you know, we've, we've, there've been, <coughs> this is dramatic, this is already dramatically more dense and, and everything <coughs> sort of shrunk down below what is sort of the standard. And I think there, there comes a point, I'm not sure exactly <coughs> where the line is, I'm not saying necessarily that seven feet is that point, but there comes a point where there's sort of a tipping point and you start to encounter issues with just basic functionality. And I think part of the tension here, if you will, with some of this stuff is that there's, as, as laudable as it is to be forward looking and, and to sort of try and facilitate this evolution, um, in the meantime, we do have to be able to function in the present. <coughs> um, I, I guess one thing I've not heard, and, I, and forgive me if I, if I missed it either in any of the submitted materials or previous discussion, is whether the fire department is weighed in on um, the uh, the streets in general. I mean, I guess we're not talking about narrowing the streets necessarily, but but the but the parking spaces. Um, if there's whether there's been any discussion about access or circulation um, as this is, has evolved. I don't know that there'd be anything that would necessarily trigger that, but that's just something that that comes to mind. Um, I don't have an issue at all with. Um, per se with uh, the uh, reducing the, um, the lot, the minimum lot size and in order to accommodate this unit count. But as, is op as often happens, it's not so much that that becomes the sticking point as is the, the parking. So I think that's something that needs to be um, a continued discussion and it, it, it may not be the most helpful feedback, but that's kind of where I am on that as, as uh, Mr. McGee is. Uh, I haven't, hadn't heard any other board members speak to that real specifically, so uh, I don't want to characterize that as unanimous by, by any means. Um, stormwater, it's, it's, it's been vetted pretty well, you know, for it is what it is at this point. Um, I appreciate um, Ms. Saunders' comments on that, uh, but it is, you know, this is uh, <coughs> just a case where the horse has truly left the barn and the infrastructure is there. Um, I, I think I understand the spirit of, of the question, the line of questioning there, just sort of basically wanting to understand what has been done to date and whether there maybe are any opportunities for, for doing other things going forward, and I think that's a perfectly legitimate <coughs> question. Um, and um, just sort of looking, looking down my list here. Uh, architecture, as has always been the case, I think looks great. Um, I, you know, again, it's consistent with everything that's been done down there. I agree with Mr. Bealey that um, everything that's been done to date has been first rate and it has a great feel down there. And um, I, that's one thing that I have generally not worried about at all on this project is architecture and kind of the built environment and the, and the overall design. I'm confident that that will continue to be the case. Um, uh, I, I like, really like the idea of the, the post office building. I think that for all the reasons stated, that makes a lot of sense. It also is consistent with that whole sort of um, kind of community feel. So um, 
obviously there are some loose ends here. Um, it may not feel like making progress, but I think we are. Um, and I just encourage the applicant and the engineer to continue to work with staff. And um, obviously we've got DEP and DOT going on in, in parallel with this, and hopefully that will advance reasonably quickly. Um, is there anything, Steve, that you, you need from us or any feedback that, that we've not provided to this point? No, I, I think we got great feedback here, and there's a lot okay. for us to be able to, uh, to address, and I think there's some certainly burden now for us to come back with a, a good supporting evidence to address the various comments and uh, thoughts that have been brought out here tonight. So between that and staff and peer review, We'll, we'll hit it dead on, and I'm, yeah, I'm hopeful I don't think that we can we've come back closed any doors here. I think we just, you know, we just want to continue the conversation and and continue to own in on it. And I think we've done that in the past on on these things, and and that we'll we'll get there one way or another. Right. Roger, did you have something else? Yes, if I may, um, I have a question. One, one question for Carrie. Um, do school buses go down into Eastern Village right now? They don't. There was a uh, template. Terry, to sorry. Out. Sorry to bring you back up there, but got to be able to hear you. <clears throat> no, they don't. They refuse to. Um, we had to provide uh, uh, school bus routes, uh, trash truck routes. Uh, we got the original approval, and there were two locations that the school bus was to pick up children. And uh, thus far, they refused to. Okay. Thank you. All right. Well, thanks, everyone. We will move on. <coughs> Item number eight. Rainin Properties, LLC, and Dunstan Properties, LLC, request the fourth amended subdivision plan review for U.S. Route 1 and Broad Turn Road Assessor's Map U30, Lot 16 and 17. <coughs> okay. Yep, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, so let's see, uh, where to begin with this one? So, so the board <laughs> and the applicant have been working through a number of changes and considerations on this project. Most recently, we've really been focused on sort of the plan development, master plan, if you will, for the two commercial lots. Um, and it, board members will recall sort of the last time the applicant was before you, I think the question was asked, what's the rush? And I believe the response was, well, I've got a restaurant I need to get started. And so board sort of directed the applicant and staff to say, well, okay, that sounds doable, let's, but let's figure out a pathway forward. So this is a first, what I'll call, incremental step in the overall picture. And so I'll focus in on what, is, what this ask is, and when we get to our next application, maybe I'll expand it into a little bit more about the overall master plan. But so as board members will recall, this is the Dunstan Crossing. It's a 264 residential unit subdivision with two commercial lots left sort of at the intersection with Route 1. Uh, what the request is before you for the fourth amended plan is really focused on two principal elements. One is to amend the phasing plan. Currently the subdivision is a four phase subdivision. The applicant seeking to turn that into a six phase subdivision. Obstensively what that does is sort of reduce the amount of infrastructure in the next phase to build, to make the road connection between what's built out on broad turn and to make the connection down through route one basically makes it more financially viable. I mean, not to speak <laughs> for the applicant, but that seems to be sort of the driver. And it gets the road work, the ability for the road work to begin, which sort of starts some of that grading around the restaurant area, because as we saw at our site visit, the roadway goes right past the big hole where the restaurant is going to go, so sort of all the grading is associated with that. <coughs> so that's one request with this. The other is to amend the right-of-way width in between <coughs> those two commercial lots. Again, as part of the master plan process, we sort of reviewed a general concept for the streetscape, which will include some 
on-street parking, um, some traffic calming measures, islands sort of in the middle of the road and those sorts of things. Those are details that we're still working through and we'll see at, a, at sort of the next phase of development, but this right away with, this amendment amends that right away with, which sort of sets up the lot for the next application we'll be seeing, which is the restaurant. We can, again, talk a bit more about that. Um, <coughs> the final thing I want to make note on is in the applicant's materials and in staff's comments, um, there was some discussion around the affordable housing components with this. Um, again, uh, of the 264 units, the, so the overall subdivision uh, is required to have 10 of those units be um, uh, affordable units. Um, the applicant's asking to modify, <coughs> excuse me, how those are developed in, in the site. Um, and actually the applicant's uh, scheduled to prepare to uh, have a discussion with our Housing Alliance on this item this very week. Um, so that's going to follow this meeting. And so <coughs> rather than this board sort of diving into those details before we hear from the folks who have really spent a lot of time on these issues, the board might want to defer that conversation until the next application subdivision amendment, which is going to be coming before you in the coming weeks or months or what have you, um, as we know the applicants who are working through that suite of materials. So. Um, I guess that's what I have at the outset. All right. Thanks, Jay. And I'll hand it over to Mr. Frank. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Again, Sean Frank with Sebago Technics. Uh, with me tonight, obviously, is uh, Elliot Chamberlain. And, and uh, Jay's made a good point. Obviously, this is right now just to uh, amend the Dunson Crossing subdivision, which was, uh, um, again, if I can just go over here for a moment. <coughs> I think it's on. <laughs> we originally had, uh, uh, again, this is pretty much the exact same master plan we had associated with the, the whole development. Uh, the original intent was basically we had three phases of development proposed uh, off from Broad Turn Road, which was obviously the main focus we had at that point in time, uh, with the understanding that once we came across, we were basically going to have to build uh, Stewart Drive through all, all the way up uh, to Route 1. So at that point in time, again, 10 years ago, if you will, we basically just called this Phase 4. Uh, as, and Jay certainly made a good point uh, as part of this. What we really now is just basically uh, uh, work on the, the development of uh, Stewart Drive itself up to Route 1, uh, providing uh, access to uh, basically 22 units. I believe it's 11 duplexes <coughs> uh, and uh, uh, 10 house lots, 11 and 12, excuse me, 11, right, so 22 <coughs> units, the, uh, the house lots along the road itself and the duplexes. Uh, we're showing them the blue now is going to be phase four, uh, excuse me, phase five, and uh, the, the pink, whatever it is, is <coughs> phase six. And again, obviously, from a, uh, an infrastructure standpoint, uh, uh, it it's, we have to put up a performance guarantee that makes a big point and, uh, and obviously allows us to, uh, uh, to break up like the, uh, the traffic impact and those types of things. Um, uh, the other part associated with this is we do have wet ponds that were part of this overall development. One here, uh, one, two, three, and four. And again, just because parts of the road are actually included within that, uh, we're actually going to have uh, those ponds will actually be part of the construction of phase four. Uh, we have been working with DEP in terms of the update of the design associated with that, so they are all up to today's standards in association with uh, uh, the sizing of the wet pond as well as the outlet control uh, that we had discussed last time. Uh, this would also include the, uh, the crossing of Phillips Brook as part of the Stewart Drive. Uh, and again, as part of that update, we're also doing a, a box culvert rather than the originally approved 42-inch culvert. Uh, but again, from this standpoint, basically, this will just allow us to revise the uh, right-of-way for Stewart Drive uh, in the location of the commercial lots and to further divide uh, the development from a, a four-phase four development into six phases. Uh, with that, Mr. Chairman, again, I'd conclude my presentation and, and hope that between me and Elliot we can answer any questions you may have. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and uh, we will open this one up for public comment. If there's anyone out there who wants to say anything else. All right. Seeing none, we'll move on to the board. Uh, and again, yeah, this is this is subdivision amendment, so you know we don't necessarily get in, need to get into a lot of sort of site site plan review type type details. Um, and at least as, as I see this, it's primarily a way of breaking this off into more of a bite-sized, manageable 
piece so that at least a portion of this project can move forward, uh, presuming the board ultimately approves that. Um, and so that's kind of what this is about. Um, Nick, do you want to start off? Do you have anything? I don't really have much on this. Um, quick question, though, with the amendment for the right of way, uh, it's being reduced to seven feet. Is that correct? I'm amend, sorry, no. Amend the right of way width. Was that number two? Uh, so let's see. It is amending the right of way width. It's going to in excess of 50 feet. There is a seven foot wide sidewalk easement on okay. the outside. Maybe that's, that's what, what you're, I'm referring to. Maybe here. that's what you're seeing there. Okay. Right. I think it was basically widening in between the commercials. Yeah. Okay. To, to, remember, they were including the uh, the proposed parking and those types of things along the street. I was confused. Exactly. I was, I was reading yep. the note here. It's. Uh, for me. All right. <laughs> I'm all set. Thank you. Thanks, Nick. Ron? I'm all set. Yeah. Roger? Uh, I'm all set as well. Okay. Robin? Regarding the phasing plan, I would, uh, as staff said, I would suggest oh, waiting um, to hear back from the people who are working on it mm -hmm. uh, diligently before we make any decisions. I would definitely defer to their uh, judgment. Um, because I can't help myself, the box culvert versus the 42-inch culvert. Uh, is it open open bottom? Uh, no, it'd actually be a, a closed bottom with with the baffles within it, and then the and the material back end. Okay. Um, that's all I have. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> yeah, I uh, I'm fine with this as well, and I agree that. Um, Makes sense to hold off on the, the affordable housing piece until the housing alliance is weighed in on and, that. And I do, and I, I didn't. That's why I didn't mention that. Just based upon staff's comment as well, because again, Elliot certainly meeting with them this week. And uh, it, right. I, again, it's, it's the units will be there. It's just a matter of you know right. uh, how do we accomplish those <laughs> ten units when it comes right yeah, down so to the, it. The affordable housing piece is with this and with Eastern Village, which we just talked about. You know, there have been things that have been sort of evolving and have been kind of. Not sticking points, but you know something that hasn't been quite figured out as we've as we've gone along, and some of that is structural. But um, I think it's we're fortunate to have the housing alliance now really directly involved in this, and and hopefully providing some good input and guidance on this. So we'll be able to do this in a way that that really works for everyone. So um, with that, I will put a motion forward. I move to approve the application of Rayan Properties LLC and Dunstan Properties LLC for the fourth amended subdivision plan of the Dunstan Crossing subdivision represented by Sebago Technics. The proposed amendment modifies the project phasing plan and adjusts the right-of-way width between commercial lots one and two. Based on the review of the application materials, I find that the proposal is consistent with the existing overall subdivision approval and the master plan approval for the commercial lots. All relevant and applicable conditions of the prior subdivision <coughs> approvals remain in effect. The motion. Second. We have a second. Any further discussion? All in favor? That's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> On a related note, item number nine. Dunstan Properties LLC requests a site plan review for Table and Tap Restaurant, Assessor's Map U30, Lot 16. Okay. Yep. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So as you just noted, this is sort of for one component of the master plan <coughs> pardon me, that the board approved back, I believe it was in August of 2015, for the two commercial developments. Um, this is the sort of restaurant piece if you will, of that overall master plan. So at this point, what the board is asked to do is to um, review this restaurant plan through the guise of our site plan review ordinance um, and those standards that apply there too. Um, just so it's clear, really what, what this commercial lot, this commercial lot one, is a standing commercial lot that could be developed with a restaurant. <laughs> we recognize, and, you know, we've talked about sort of the larger suite of development that's being considered for this lot that will ultimately require a more global subdivision approval. But at this point, it's really focused in on allowing, so, so the idea is that this restaurant should, 
this restaurant review should be able to stand on its own legs in terms of the site plan review standards. So that's what the board's being asked to, to consider. Um, to that end, we've seen this item a number of times. Staff has, you know, some detailed comments, but I'll, I'm really just going to focus on some of the highlighted issues. Um, one, I just want to make note of last time we saw this, there was an issue with the, the building meeting height requirements. We've ad the applicants addressed that. Um, so the board, it, the design does meet zoning standards. So if the board's happy with the design and feels that design meets our design standards, then it, it's, uh, um, it meets the zoning standards. So that's a critical piece out of the way. Um, the other element uh, that I want to just flag, and this is a discussion that we've had sort of ongoing, but I don't believe has been resolved to date, and really looking for the board to sort of answer the question tonight, so to speak, is on the 25-foot buffer um, to the VR2 district. Um, there's been a bit of discussion around that. I don't know that I need, I'm happy to go into the details of that, but again, the standards typically call for a 25-foot setback between a commercial zone and a residential zone. Um, there are flexible standards that the board can apply through the TVC2 district if you sort of see that there's compelling reason. Um, and so we'd like the board to sort of make a final determination on that uh, this evening. I will note that one of the things that we don't have the answer to tonight that would really um, impede the board from making a final decision is really understanding the full traffic impacts of the, of the restaurant. The applicant has talked about how the restaurant <clears throat> I should say this is where the restaurant and the overall subdivision sort of start to merge again. Um, the applicant <coughs> statement in, in their materials um, is that you know the, the subdivision is a 264 unit subdivision of which only a certain percentage is built out. And so that this restaurant traffic will essentially um, uh, uh, the amount of undeveloped capacity, I'll say, in the subdivision is equal to or less than, uh, equal to or more than what the restaurant will, will um, generate. And that's what we need to sort of understand. The issue there is, and the reason we really need to understand that now, is what the, those impacts are on that Route 1 and Stewart Drive intersection. And again, that brings us sort of to the more global subdivision approval. Um, but so it until the applicant can, can really give us that, that fully vetted traffic analysis of understanding what the difference is and which then phases of subdivision will be put on hold until a DOT and traffic permits are issued, <coughs> uh, we're not ready to sort of take final action. But I do think, you know, um, those are sort of, I guess those are the sort of the three main highlights of staff comments. We certainly have some other issues, you know, park, uh, bike racks and those sorts of things that I think can be readily addressed um, moving forward. So with that, Mr. Chair, I would turn it back to you at this time. Thank you, Jay. Actually, I did, I'm sorry, I, I, the, the other issue, and I'd forgotten, is there are still, um, I would just want to ask Angela if she could just sort of chime in in terms of the stormwater approaches because um, that is something that is outside of my expertise. And All right. I would much rather her speak to it. <laughs> Please go ahead, Angela. Okay. <laughs> um, I have been working back and forth with Sean and Elliot Chamberlain, and as well as Rick Meek, who's doing the stormwater report um, for this project and incorporating LID measures onto the site. So they've been graciously accommodating that. Um, however, I was talking with Rick earlier this week. Um, or last week, um, the calculations are still kind of not there. I think we're all moving the same direction, but I still need um, to, to make sure <coughs> they function in a way that actually makes sense for installing them. So I, I think we're we're getting close and we're heading in the right direction, but I just need some additional, I guess, calculations and things like that to, to ensure that. And, and obviously it's a little more sensitive being in, in Phillips Brook and, and the town's putting in a lot of time and effort and money. Uh, as well as the state um, into Phillips Brook and, and working on our management plan at the moment. So I just want to, I guess, point out that I, I think we're getting there. It's just um, it's a sensitive thing that we just need to work through the details for. So. Okay. Thank you. And with that, um, we'll turn it over to the applicant's representative. Thank you. Uh, my name is Tom Emery. I'm a Maine licensed landscape architect with Foresight Architects uh, with me tonight. 
is Elliot Chamberlain, the uh, developer, Mark Burns, uh, the architect and president of Foresight Architects, and uh, Frank, uh, whom I think you all have met before this evening, uh, Sean Frank. Uh, what I'd like to do is, uh, this is a distinct site plan. I'm not going to mention the master plan at all other than to say I'm not going to mention it uh, and give you a brief overview of the site layout, which you've all seen through the previously stated word, and then go right to uh, the comments from staff. Uh, just to get everyone oriented, uh, this is oriented very much in the way you've seen the master plan to date. Uh, route 1 would be down on the floor about to the correct scale, and uh, west is up on the sheet. Uh, this is Stewart Drive to the right. This is the proposed uh, restaurant. Uh, this is parking lot A as described, so circulation is that people coming up Stewart Drive would enter the parking lot in either location. There's accessible spaces located uh, to the west. Uh, there's also diagonal parking in front of the restaurant, and uh, there's accessible uh, pathways uh, on both sides of the restaurant. Service for the restaurant is to the rear uh, in, in the southeast corner. Uh, there's a dumpster enclosure at that location. There's a service door, so all of the deliveries would uh, take place there. Uh, we have mechanical equipment that's screened behind a six-foot uh, fence in this location, and we have two buried 1,000-gallon propane tanks in this uh, island, and I'll get to the comment there. This parking lot has uh, 61 <coughs> spaces, of which we need 33 for the restaurant. Additionally, we have uh, eight spaces, I believe it is, uh, out front in uh, Stewart Drive, uh, which we're not even assuming is part of uh, the parking that's being met. Uh, the planting you see here uh, is in context of the overall plan, uh, deciduous trees uh, between here and the future parking lots, evergreen trees against the abutting residential zone, and in this area there will be a, a large open informal uh, play field, so with space, uh, some um, paper birch uh, or river birch uh, fairly far apart there to allow uh, views through. In terms of the restaurant itself, there's uh, ornamental plantings to the front. There are street trees along Stewart Drive and in the sidewalk or just behind the sidewalk in front of the restaurant. Those are flowering trees. And then there are flowering trees in this location as well as along the back of the restaurant. To the uh, southwest uh, corner of the restaurant is a patio uh, seating area for 16 to 24, uh, depending upon how tightly they're seated. There's an uh, open lawn area, and then there's a fire pit, and then there's a uh, informal uh, pavers here and low landscaping around a fence that encloses that space. The goal here is that uh, people can relax during the good season, sit out here in the afternoons and overlook the fields and enjoy uh, the sunsets. Um, with that, I'll get right to uh, the planner comments. Uh, the first one was regarding the 75-foot, 25-foot uh, setback. Excuse me. Those spaces are right, right here. The first uh, seven or eight or nine spaces, and uh, as a, uh, as you saw at the site walk, there's a considerable grade change in this location. We're proposing to provide a six-foot fence along that entire length of, of space is about 90 feet long. In addition, we're planting uh, evergreen six feet tall uh, in front of the fence between the parking and the fence, uh, and those would be spaced all along uh, this side. Uh, we don't see as much of an issue here uh, because the adjacent use is just an informal uh, play area, so there's no real screening proposed at that location, and the encroachment is, uh, it's the incidence of a CAD file. That's, that's really what's created. If the original intent was to have it within the 25, not to have it encroach, but uh, after the survey was completed and all of the layout was done, it ended up being about a foot of encroachment. Uh, so that's how that came about. Uh, the parking lot uh, aisle width, Traditionally, uh, we've tried to provide 24 feet with 18-foot spaces. Uh, some of those spaces have grown a little bit, but uh, we'll be sure that for the final plan that we have uh, 24 feet with 18-foot spaces. Um, 
some people want to have 18 and a half foot spaces with narrow maneuvering uh, aisles, but typically the spaces will be nine feet wide, 18 feet deep with a 24 foot uh, maneuvering lane. And our roadways typically are between 22 uh, feet and 20 feet for one way, 22 feet uh, up to 24 feet for two way circulation. And again, the idea is to minimize uh, the pavement and provide safe and adequate uh, circulation. Uh, the bike rack, I think there's sort of a, um, an opportunity here, and we can certainly this will be Elliot's uh, decision uh, per usual, but uh, there's an opportunity to incorporate it with the overall streetscape of Stewart Drive. There's plenty of sidewalk room out there. It's not just something that needs to be specific for a restaurant. It can be something that has community uh, opportunities as well in its siting and design. Uh, the lighting, there was a concern about or a statement about the coordination between the photometric plan and the lighting that's shown on the landscape plan. The intent is that the two do align. Uh, what has happened is that one of the light poles had to shift a little bit because of the, uh, the fence enclosure. Uh, there's a comment regarding the two propane tanks, two maple trees, and a light pole in the island. Uh, the, uh, we need to coordinate that further. The propane tanks came after the other elements were located. Uh, so we'll come back with that final uh, element coordinated. Uh, with the lighting though, um, the design intent is, is again, it's LED lights, they're period lights. Uh, the light poles <coughs> range from 10 to 12 feet uh, tall and there are accent lights at the end islands along Stewart Drive uh, that, are, that have uh, taller 15-foot poles. And that's because the lights are mounted on brackets. They're not post-off lights. Uh, regarding the standard sizes for landscape, uh, I would like to make this compromise with the planning board uh, and, of course, with Elliot's endorsement. Uh, the trees such as uh, red maples and other overstory trees, let's call them, two and a half inch caliper I think works well. Uh, I've tried two inch caliper for ornamental flowering trees in the past and found one that the choices become very limited because of the, the size of the, the uh, tree and they become extraordinarily expensive. Uh, I've had real good luck with one inch, inch and a half caliper uh, flowering trees and they establish uh, very successfully at a reasonable <coughs> cost and uh, being uh, readily available. And with the uh, overstory trees, the, the two and a half caliper in the parking lot and so forth, I think will give you that impact you're looking for with a larger caliper tree. I think that makes a, a good compromise and something that will allow us to continue to have uh, additional landscaping that we've shown in the overall development. With that, I'll uh, turn it over. Um, yeah, I actually know I had to have a few things to say. Uh, Because uh, Jay did mention that obviously traffic, and we've had spent a, a lot of time in traffic in terms of associated with the DOT and uh, in town staff, and specifically, obviously, you know, regarding the whole uh, master plan in association with the subdivision. And we had provided some initial numbers to uh, uh, to staff in association with, you know, the fact that uh, we have a TMP right now in association with the overall subdivision. Obviously, those trips aren't coming out to Stewart <coughs> right now, um, and. And you know that they are permitted to occur here, and that the restaurant would be less than those. Uh, what Jay specifically asked for is, is like we talked about, is we have now phases four and phases five uh, that are certainly down the road some point, and to relate phase four and five, if you will, to what we have for the traffic associated with the proposed restaurant. I, <laughs> excuse me, five and six. I apologize. Uh, phases five and six. And we have done those numbers, and again, obviously, I didn't want to just submit those to Jay at the last minute here on Monday, uh, but the fact that, you know, the, the traffic associated with five and six, which the applicant agrees will not be constructed, uh, <coughs> to having everything else worked out for the whole development uh, is less than the proposed traffic that will be coming from the restaurant. And again, I will get that uh, directly to Jay and to Bill Bray so that they can take a look at that. Um, 
In terms of the stormwater management, as I discussed, again, what we have is a couple of large wet ponds, and I do know that uh, we've had these discussions before in terms of the, uh, the LID associated with this. As you may recall, uh, chloride had been a discussion down through here and, and trying to minimize uh, uh, you know, uh, any seepage, if you will, into the groundwater associated with that. So our discussion had been really was more taking the roof runoff and, and trying to percolate that down into the soils. And uh, uh, to be honest with you, what I was just looking at that was more as a groundwater recharge, more than an actual treatment factor, and maybe that's where the confusion was. Um, and, uh, and I think that's where the, the biggest probably coordination is going on right now between Angela and Rick Meek from my office in terms of, uh, you know, the actual treatment associated with the infiltration or are we just trying to do a, a recharge associated with that? But again, we'll certainly get her the numbers uh, on that. Uh, in terms of the uh, aisle widths, as Tom mentioned a little bit, uh, yeah, I just had taken those specific numbers that had come off from the master plan. Um, and I thought that that had been kind of worked out there before, but obviously uh, whatever those widths need to be, certainly the 24 feet within the parking aisles themselves, we'll certainly make sure that those are all 24 feet, and I have actually adjusted everything to make sure those are 24 feet. So uh, with that, Mr. Chairman, do you want to say anything? Mark, want to say something about the architecture? I guess we'll do a little after this. I guess I'd ask Jay one question. When we talk about the aisle width, um, we're obviously in, in a lot of projects trying to minimize width of, of roadways. Obviously, there was a person here tonight who has a project that we have roads as low as 20 feet wide in a residential project. Granted, we don't have parking. That's not between parking aisles. Um, I would ask on the areas that we have parking only on one side, you see at the top of the page, <coughs> uh, uh, parking up against the end of the building, and then that backs up to the field. Is it really necessary to have 24 feet in those areas? I guess so. I, I know uh, the 25 foot standard was referenced in uh, Woodard and Kern's memo. They, as our peer reviewers, are looking at the town standards and just flagging those. So, what I would suggest is those town standards are part of our site plan review ordinance. Those standards, the board has the ability to to be flexible with, to waive, to, re to consider, provided the applicant demonstrate that it's still providing safe access and functionality throughout the site. So I guess I'd sort of turn it back to you to say with your next submission, if you can demonstrate that it, vehicles can easily <coughs> and safely get through the site at the width you're proposing, um, I think the board generally has been in favor of narrowing up where where possible, but I don't want to speak for the board, and it looks like Angela has something she wants to say on the issue, so. You don't want. <laughs> the other comment I think in staff um, was actually talking about how it varies, 20, you have 22 and 24 foot wide um, drive aisles, and the actual comment was about is there potential for reducing those and being consistent, and then you're actually reducing impervious area. So not necessarily saying you heading towards 25, but actually looking at can you consistently be 22 and say and provide, as Jay is saying, a, state, a safe kind of traffic patterns through the site, and then in turn you're actually reducing impervious. I think that. <coughs> yeah, and I, and I like for, for for two reasons. Obviously, the the width of the pavement, the less cost, and obviously in this case where we are up against uh, Phillipsburg. Um, for certainly a very strong second reason, I would like to see 22 feet everywhere. Sean and I maybe have a little disagreement on that, um, and I think that's more of he's, you know, you have a standard. I think he's trying to find a balance and act between what I'm trying to accomplish and, and what the ordinance says, but I certainly feel 22 feet between the 18-foot aisles is more than sufficient for somebody to back out um, a, a, out of an 18-foot spot in a 22-foot lane. Um, whether you have 22 or 24 on a really busy night at, at other restaurant, it, people are going to have to be careful no matter whether they have 22, 24, or 25. Um, so I, I don't think it accomplishes much on the safety factor, and I think in this case it's a less costly item and not that that is supposed to be the board's uh, issue, but in this case where we do have uh, an impaired stream, Obviously, any less pavement without reducing safety and can save costs certainly makes sense. As far as the uh, one other issue, I, I'll, I'll speak maybe for a minute for Mark, so he maybe there's, there's not a lot to talk about with the building. The building has only changed in height 
Um, we, uh, I guess, were forced to raise the height of the building uh, two feet to meet a magical number. Um, it now meets that. <coughs> the design of the building has not changed. We still, uh, it's still a mixture of a cement board siding and a uh, vinyl shake at the, uh, or you'll see two feet below the, uh, uh, the fascia line and on the gable ends of the building. Besides that, nothing has changed. We've kept the dormers. I think there was a comment regarding the dormers as to their purpose. They are strictly architectural on the exterior of the building. They do not come through. Uh, you cannot see those, um, and they will be blackened out. They are a regular window, but they'll be blackened out on the inside so that you can't see through to the framing or to the sheathing on the inside. Um, if there's any other questions regarding the building, certainly Mark is here to <coughs> answer them or myself. Thank you. All right, thank you. Um, got one more, one last chance for public comment. Still no one. Um, <laughs> all right, Ron, this is your last item. Yeah, yeah thank you. I appreciate item. that. Uh, first of all, I want to commend you guys on a great presentation. Uh, I mean, it, it flowed very nicely, and uh, as my last presentation, it's a good way of going out, so I commend you for that. Uh, let, me, let me say that uh, going on the record for, for some of the board members who are new, we, we have given 22 feet many times, so when in your deliberations, take that into consideration that we, and it has never been to my knowledge any problems with that whatsoever. Um, the only comment I'm going to make other than I think Scalvo can use some good restaurants is that I'm sorry I won't be around to vote for her in the final analysis, so I wish you well. Thanks, Ron. Nick? All right. I pretty much have one question. Um, the fence that you're proposing for the buffer, did you have that on the property line or on the parking lot line? I thought in the packet I read the parking lot line. Two feet inside the property. <clears throat> it's intended to be two feet in from the property. The standard requires that the, the fence be located so that it can be maintained. So we've set it two feet away from the property line toward the parking lot. From the par property line. So you're, you're almost it, It's on our property. Okay. I, either I misread it or... Maybe it was a, a typo, but I thought I read in here that it was going to be two feet from the end of the parking lot field. No, uh, that concerned me. To be from the property. But now I don't have to worry about that, so thank you. Um, that was it. I mean, as far as uh, Jay answering your question, um, I'm I'm a little bit disappointed that some of my earlier words about drawing within the lines were not heeded. However, the more I looked at what really happened here, or I suspect what really happened here, is you came in with your plan at 15 feet away all the way around, and then did it all up, and then all of a sudden somebody said, I think that's supposed to be 25 there, and it ended up catching your parking lot. So I'm not going to hold, let me think it this way, because I'm not going to hold it against you that you weren't intentionally drawing outside of your lines, and that uh, it just happened to, to be at that spot. I also say that in your favor is the elevation difference um, that you have there. It's an enormous elevation difference. So whether you were at a 15-foot setback or a 25 or even a 6-foot setback, the, uh, the elevation makes a big, it, it's its own natural barrier. So I'm okay with uh, your question as to whether or not uh, <coughs> the, buffer, the buffer reduction is okay and, with me. It is. And I, too, that has been talked about and thought about and gone over more times than I care to admit, but I think even driving here tonight, probably my final answer is I, I'd be willing to let those eight spots go as long as there was some ability down the road that if we found we were really that tight, that we could at least come back in and ask the board to relook at putting those back in. Can always be reconsidered. Yeah. yeah. I mean, for me personally, I, looking at the situation as to where you are right now, I'm, and especially with that elevation, your efforts with the buffering on top of it, I'm okay with the way the plan yeah. sits. But that's me personally. It's a very kind offer of you. Maybe other board members would like to take yeah. you up on it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. That's it. Roger. Um, re regarding these um, these same parking spaces. <coughs> 
I don't recall on the site walk, did you indicate whether you had talked to um, the Coffins about that? That's the property that's right by that. We have not talked to the couple. I, I don't, were they? I don't think they were there at the site walk. I was. No. Oh, okay. I, I did not get the opportunity to meet them, uh, so I have not talked to them um, about about that encroachment. And we don't, we haven't heard anything from, from them, Jay, is that correct? Emma, that I recall seeing or hearing, the only person who I recall speaking were the uh, Mississo couple. Yes, right, um, yeah. Yeah. But I don't recall those, these folks speaking at the last meeting. If I just may add, Mr. Chairman, they, they were here, as a matter of fact, and <coughs> that was the, uh, the uh, older folks we met out. And so we did show them the plan. Uh, and, and again, I, was it specific, and did they know exactly whether they were looking in terms of that parking in relationship to their property line? I can't say that, but uh, you know, they, I did show them where their property line was and, and where the edge of the pavement was and that type of stuff. And, and they did seem uh, uh, generally, uh, I think they were more curious than anything else, to be honest with you. But now, you mentioned the uh, stockade fence is going to be two feet onto your property. Yes. Right there. That's quite a slope there, isn't it? Yes. Uh, <coughs> where would the uh, trees be then? They would be on the restaurant side of the fence? Correct. Right, only two feet in, there wouldn't be enough room to yeah. plan anything yeah. between the line and, and there. How, <laughs> how high are those trees going to get, do you know? Six feet? Well, they may not even cover the fence, then. <laughs> well, you got an elevation drop there, too. Yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. Uh, I'm 67 years old, so time is means something probably different to me than to younger people in the audience. But I moved into a house in 1983, and the spruce trees and hemlocks that the neighbors planted along their stockade fence were just wisping over the top of the six-foot stockade fence. Those trees are now 30 feet tall. So planting them at six feet on a steep slope gives them a much better chance of getting established and growing quickly rather than trying to find something taller and particularly on a steep slope. So I think this is really a good compromise for a long-term solution that really may not be as much of a problem uh, in three dimension as it appears to be in two dimension. Okay. I have nothing further. Thank you. Robin? So guess who's going to take you up on your eight parking spot offer? <laughs> <laughs> so let's put that on the table. Um, largely, you know, um, I think because of the grade difference, I think that there is um, just some awkwardness there kind of a thing. And also, like you're talking about the minimizing the impacts to Phillips Brook. And if you do find that you need those eight spots, as, as Jay said, Come back for reconsideration, and I, I commend you all, too, for the work that you're doing to help out Angela and the town with the Felix Brook um, watershed consideration and the low-impact development stormwater features. So That's my goal every day, to help Angela out. To help Angela out. <laughs> Me, too. We have something in common. Excellent. Um, thank you guys so much mm -hmm. for, for bringing this to town. It's a, I think it's a, a great idea. And was there anything else that you, that you needed the board to weigh in on, Jay? You know, that, that was the biggest item. Um, clearly, I had some other comments in here that I think were pretty minor in nature. Okay. So unless the applicant's looking for anything directly, and then I would just Ooh. ask Angela if she has any. But I would say that's really the most pertinent item for this round. And then I think it sets us up pretty well um, moving forward, I, I think. So just to clarify then, you know, those we're talking about those eight parking spots that are inside the 25-foot buffer there. Type of Correct. Thing. Right. It's either six, seven, eight. There is a Correct. dotted line yep. uh, sh you. cutting across down to from a, a full d 18 feet all the way down to nothing. Uh, and I think it is eight, eight, seven or eight spots that it actually has an impact on. Thank you so much. Yep. I'm all set. Thank you, Court. Thank you. Um, well, I guess starting off, piggybacking on that, on that conversation, um, I think I think I'd also like to take you up on that that uh, compromise on uh, on the eight spots. Uh, I agree with with uh, Nick that given the grade change and everything, it's you know it's not as much of a sort of a visual issue as it might otherwise be. But that opportunity is there. I think it you know just give give us a little more peace of mind. And I I do think the point about further reducing impervious surface is a is a is an important one and a valid one. So definitely appreciate that. Um, also on that theme of, of uh, reducing impervious uh, surfaces or, or minimizing them, um, I'm fine with the smaller parking lot, uh, parking space width. 
Um, as Ron pointed out, we've done that on, on a number of, number of spots in town, and I think it makes sense here. Um, look forward to seeing the, uh, the traffic analysis. Uh, Stormwater, as was, as was mentioned, is moving in the right direction, and um, appreciate you working with staff on that. Um, on the, um, I guess I'll be the one to bring up architecture. Um, I, I'm not, I don't have any concerns per se. Um, I guess one, I, I, I was glad that you spoke to the dormers because my reaction, and, and it's, a, it's a subjective one, admittedly, and it's not a showstopper for me by any means, but. My reaction when I when I saw the the elevation was, uh, you know, it's kind of it's like trying to look like a house. I don't know if that was sort of the intent to sort of have it blend into the neighborhood. Um, I guess for me, um, my personal preference would be to to if, if there's a way to to have it still still work uh, aesthetically and functionally, obviously, um, is to maybe go away from that and have it be more of a, you know, it's a restaurant. Uh, maybe something that, that's truly complimentary, and I'm I'm just generally, personally, not a big fan of fall stormers and, and things like that. Um, and I can't speak to what your, you know, what the motivation was there, and and others may not care one way or the other. But that's just my my two cents on that. Uh, if, if that's something that's still um, up in the air for you. Yeah, we've. I mean, when you're trying to balance out maybe a future look of what I see for Dunstan Village as a whole compared to architects' ideas and designs, compared to what the, the in, in my case, the uh, tenant, uh, who very well may end up owning this building, uh, his wants and needs and costs and look. Uh, and it is, it, you're always riding a fine line. Um, I think we certainly were uh, intending to try to keep more of a residential look and try to lean away from a, a stronger commercial look, if you will. Um, being where it is and being right next to Dunstan Crossing. So, and when you take those off, you do tend to end up with a lot of roof on this building, um, which is not always bad, but it's probably the first choice is not to end up with a lot of roof. And I think at this point, we're definitely because of some uh, mechanical equipment and needs going to a hip roof on the ends are probably out of the question at this point. Um, you know, and certainly Mark can, can lend uh, more comment, but I, I think we've pretty pretty close nailed it to uh, all the different ideas. And believe me, this is you know this is round number eight, nine, or ten yeah, at this no, point. I, that when I, you guys finally I'll see be it. The last one to want to try to redesign your building for you. Yeah. Uh, just food for thought. Yep. Um, and um, yeah, beyond that, I think I think it's all pretty straightforward, and we'll look forward to seeing you back hopefully soon. Is there anything else you need from us? I, I did actually can't remember who asked the question that there's so the one the one thing that it would be helpful and board members just need to speak up if there's a problem because I think Mr. Emery touched on it in terms of the size of the trees um, you know I certainly trust the landscape architects you know I meant I, to say I'm, I'm perfectly so. fine with that what would Susan Agla say <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't even attempt to guess <laughs> but so unless anyone has concerns, I'm going to assume that the board's good with that, and that's what we'll be seeing moving forward is that the one and a half inch for flowering trees and two and a half for the overstory. So thank you. All right. Okay. <clears throat> thank you. What's your next question? <laughs> <laughs> We're just going to appoint him to the board. Yeah, he's going to give the administrative <laughs> report next. Okay. Sean, have you been sworn in? Yeah. <laughs> do we have a staff report, Jay? Uh, let's see. What, what do we have here? Um, so staff report, um, do just want to note for the board that there is a meeting next week on uh, November the 15th at the Pine Point Fire Department beginning at 6.30. It's on the East Grand Road um, reconstruction project. Um, so folks on the board who are interested and certainly member of the public, we would invite them to attend. Um, that's why I have. Angela, do you have anything? No? Yep. All right. All right. Do we have an administrative amendment report? Nothing to report at this meeting. Planning board correspondence. I have a couple things to note. Okay. Um, 
first I did I did receive a call um, in regard to the proposed um, enterprise park multifamily <coughs> development which we <coughs> had a very preliminary pre presentation on to this point and I referred the caller to our policy to not engage in ex parte communication basically discussing things outside of meetings with with uh, the public and referred her back to staff and I know she's been in touch with staff and um, <coughs> I just want to try to make sure everyone's working with the same the same uh, information um, and then there were uh, several uh, emails uh, with 14 emails um, and or letters that were received in connection with <coughs> three, 3 East Grand Ave um, Conroy's the Conroy's garage uh, proposed redevelopment and I, I won't read off all their names but I just wanted to um, state for the record that those that those have been noted and, and logged and, and everyone has copies of those and they'll be certainly taken into consideration and we appreciate the, the feedback on that if um, I could just note on that 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 application is actually on your next <coughs> agenda so those will be in great. your Dropbox you. folder as well great. but which for the record is in only two weeks since we um, bumped uh, this meeting back from from Halloween night, so it'll be a quicker turnaround this time. At Thanksgiving. <laughs> <laughs> Any other correspondence? Yes, uh, I too was reached out by a, a woman. <coughs> I directed her to Jay and her comments to uh, Jay, and I encouraged her to put them in writing. Okay. Thank you. Yep, I was just also going to note that the board members right. in your packet, you should have seen also a letter from uh, Mr. McBrady, <coughs> who's regarding the Pleasant Hill. Uh, Cobble Hill trailer uh, project you guys approved back in late summer could have been September but I feel like it was summertime um, but was referring that it was back in May May, May so even longer ago. Oh, my goodness yeah. anyway um, it was referencing a project you had previously uh, disposed of so um, just reference that you should have received copies of that as well thank you uh, moving on to planning board comments um, just want to thank Ron Mazur I have a few comments to myself. For his, I'll yield the floor to you in, in just a minute, Ron, but I just <laughs> wanted to thank you for, for all your, your service to the board and the town, um, serving on the on this board since back in 08, um, which is a long time when you go through these meetings and all the prep that's involved with that, and uh, actively participating, and not only on this board, but on the Transportation Committee as well, I'm reporting out on that, and it's been a pleasure serving with you, and we... We all really appreciate your <coughs> time and wish you the best. Thank you. And following up on that, it's been quite the ride. Uh, I've really enjoyed the almost nine years that I've uh, been on the board, and I, I really want to thank the current and past members of the board for their patience, their support, and their education. Um, I honestly believe I had the opportunity to serve uh, on this board and other boards uh, with some excellent, dedicated people uh, who are citizens of this town. And I especially want to thank staff. Uh, staff has been just absolutely great to me, and uh, for all they've done for me, um, I really can't express my appreciation enough. And as I've stated in the past, and I'll repeat to the citizens of this town, you have the best planning staff in the area. And I just hope everybody will continue to work with them and support them. Because I think that what we've accomplished as a board during my tenure has really benefited everybody in this town. I think we've done a hell of a job in, for the most part. And uh, that's the way I'm walking away from this, is feeling good what we've accomplished. So I want to thank everybody. Thank you. Any other planning board comments? I would just like to thank Mr. Mazur for his service as well. And I have one other comment, is, uh, and I know I've asked it before, but that we do think about time limits for applicants. Um, and uh, maybe just think about it, something to talk about. Um, because rehashing staff comments in, in front of the, the planning board, I think, is a little bit unacceptable. I'd, I'd, I'd rather have the time to look at things and and uh, not necessarily have somebody come up. And yeah, I, did, I I appreciate that comment, and I think um, 
it, as you allude to, it has been discussed a little bit, and whether it's a, you know, something that's, you know, really explicit or at least, you know, I think staff generally makes the makes the effort to try and establish expectations with applicants so they kind of know not only how prepared they need to be, but you know how to be most efficient with their presentations. And sometimes there are are valid reasons to walk through comments to to let us know how they've responded to certain things, but it, not necessarily I agree. always. And I have done a little outreach to other word communities. By word. Yeah. There are some other communities who do have time limits on yeah. applicant presentations. So yeah. just thought, food for thought. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. I want to say thank you to Ron Mazur for serving. Um, this this board is definitely not going to be the same without you. And uh, <laughs> I, I've appreciated it all the time. And I thank you for uh, getting me involved. You were the... Uh, you were the fisherman on that trip, so uh, <laughs> thank you again, and uh, it's it's really been a pleasure serving with you. Good thank luck. You. Thank you. Uh, thanks again, Ron. Um, we will have two new members uh, joining us for our next meeting. It's been approved by the council, so we'll have a full board, um, one taking Ron's seat and another one taking the seat that has been Mike Woods. Uh, so we'll look forward to that. Any other comments? All right. Well, thank you all. And I will move to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Thank you. Thank you.